to the championship final uh, two years in a row. They lose both years to the Saskatoon Hilltops. So I've got to believe that they've got to come into this game uh, really with something to prove nothing less than a national championship. Yeah, I think so. I think they, you know, they've been chomping at the bit. They've got a veteran team, I think, uh, in a lot of the areas where uh, the Cats uh, have a young team, I think, and they're going to they're gonna be there in the next couple of years. So it's going to be exciting to see how they come out and just try to play as a team, I think, is really important when you have a young group and how they, how can they recover from maybe uh, missteps along the way. Matt Blocker is the head coach of the Calgary Colts. This is his third year with the team. Uh, he came over from the uh, B.C. Uh, Junior Football Conference where he was the number one coach in the entire league. And he came into Calgary uh, with the express purpose. He was hired by the Calgary Colts to do nothing less than win a, a championship in his first three or four years. And it, uh, it looks like he, he's really coming close to that. Uh, he's close. He's got one more step to go. You can be close a lot, but eventually you gotta, you got to win one. So I'm sure he's ready to go, and he's got his boys ready to go tonight. And it's important uh, for Matt Blocker as well. He's instilled what they call the Calgary Colts culture on this team and that's something that uh, a lot of football teams a lot of uh, sports teams for that matter talk about is the culture and here we go with the opening kickoff of another season of prairie football conference action at clark stadium the ball is picked off at about the 10 yard line it's taken there by number 19 jesse Kuntz, and Kuntz makes his way all the way up to about the 38 yard line hit hard on the play a nice tackle uh, by number nine uh, justin swedish coming in uh, uh, from his usual position as the third backup quarterback. <laughs> yeah, he no, like, that was, he likes that was, to get involved, obviously. That was a good return out to the 39. That's pretty decent field position to start the game, and uh, we'll see what they can do on the first drive. All right, this is it. This is the uh, the beginning of a new season for Bailey Wasdell, his first year as the starting quarterback for the Calgary Colts. One setback, motion goes to the right, downfield, a pass. It is picked off. Picked off, Tony Sachuk. Tony Sabchuk, last year's CJFL Rookie of the Year, and right off the top, he picks one off. He had that one read perfectly. You know what? The zone, the zone defense, I don't know if the uh, quarterback read that. He thought he may have had man backside, and Tony just read that perfectly. He had help on this side of the field, and then Tony just slid right over and took care of that one. Great height, too. He had to go up for that one to bring it down. That was good in contact, three guys in the area. So great start for, uh, for uh, the defense and tough start for the young quarterback. All right, and this is, this is a chance for Colton Hippie for his first start in the Prairie Football Conference after spending three years under Jordan Olson. Set, one set backfield, there's the handoff to Bray Josu. Josu is held up at the line of scrimmage, may even have lost a yard or two on the play. And I think that was something that maybe the Colts uh, have been expecting. You know, Bray Josu was probably one of the top running backs in the, in the league last year and, and just had a great season the year before that too. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he can do tonight and if he can get that run game going. It's going to put a lot of emphasis on those hoggies to make sure they uh, get, get their hands on some D-line. The Calgary D-line looks pretty big out there. He's a little, uh, little, little spark plug, that guy. A little, uh, just about 5'6", 170 pounds, but he's got that low uh, balance and is able to keep his balance really well. Now back in the pocket, looking downfield. There's the pass. It is complete on this side. Taken there by number eight, Brandon Olson. And Olson will pick up a gain of about maybe two or three yards. Uh, might get back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll be about it. There is a flag on the play. Uh, they're calling the... Uh, Looks like it's offside against the Cats. Uh, it is offside against uh, number one for the uh, for the Wildcats. That is uh, Tristan Schultenkamper. So it'll be third and about uh, eight and a half. And we'll get a chance to see the punting team in action for the Wildcats. They are led by Matt Zeroni, the 19-year-old out of McNally High School, 6'1", 170 pounds. He uh, started doing most of the uh, kicking with this team late in the season last year. Ball is out. It is blocked, and it'll be picked up and run into the end zone. Touchdown, Colton Bird. Well, that's a tough start on uh, special teams. You want to be able to get that ball off and uh, gain that field position, and uh, Calgary just brought enough guys, and they just uh, just got by the blockers. It maybe took a little bit long to get that ball off. Colton Burr, 19-year-old out of the Notre Dame Pride 
out of uh, Calgary, 5'11", 175 pounds, and you know how many players Notre Dame Pride has brought into this league. Uh, they are one of the top high schools in Calgary and have been in the, uh, the Senior Bowl a number of times. Yeah, I've seen a few of them in the Senior Bowl. <laughs> Usually there's about half the roster down there, so it's, uh, they're definitely here and they're definitely making an impact. All right, here's that really strange point after formation that they have. And now they'll bring everybody up to the line. Going to have to talk about that and what the point of it is. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to see. You know, every coach has a rationale for it, right? And it, we'll uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll get a chance to ask the coach what the rationale for that one is. All right, Stephen Fabian with the uh, point after, and it is a seven to nothing football game in favor of the Calgary Colts. There was an offside against uh, the Wildcats, so that'll be added to the uh, kickoff and. The Colts, uh, as they seem to every game that they play, they get off to that early lead and they just uh, they just keep coming at you. Well, big credit to the special teams unit on the Colts on that play. They just they made a play, right? You've got to make plays in a game, and that's that's a big part of the game is special teams. You don't ever want to you don't ever want to not not to practice that enough uh, working up to games because it can be a game changer and it's uh, put a good start for the Colts out there. This is a this is an interesting situation, I think, for uh, head coach Darcy Park. He knows. Uh, that he's got a lot of players from last year. He knows that uh, a lot of them have a bad taste in their mouths about last year, and then something like this happens so early in the football game. He's, he's got to get these guys going and, 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 and keep them up. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things, and I'm sure Darcy's been working on setting the culture in the Cats organization uh, just like they have with the Colts. Um, you know, if you set that culture, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow the players uh, uh, an environment really to just rebound from that and understand, okay, you know what, mistakes are going to happen in a game. And uh, we've got to respond and respond in a positive way. So we'll see what they can do here now getting the ball back. All right. Kick off with that offside call added to it from the 50-yard line. Good end over end kick coming down just over the goal line. Taken there by number 13, Alex Vlander. The Salisbury comp grad takes it out to the outside. Still going with it. Still has it. Cuts around one inside one player and is finally taken down. After a 34-yard run back, Alex Vlander from Salisbury Comp. A great little return there. He had uh, three guys in front and some really big plays, or really big blocks out in front, and he uh, made probably three or four guys who got hands on him miss. Great credit to him uh, getting out to the 34-yard line. That's one thing that uh, uh, Coach uh, Park talked about was, uh, was the specialty teams and, and how hard they've worked this year to, uh, to get things going on that end of the football as well. Yeah, I know it showed there on a great return. I mean, that was a deep kick right to the goal line, and he got out to the 34, which is fabulous. Colton Hippie, quads to the right, looks downfield. The ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second and 10 for the Wildcats. That was a good job of the D-line getting their hands up on that quick uh, drop, the short drop by the quarterback. Got their hands up because they knew they weren't going to get to him. It's going to be tough uh, on, on the Hippie. I mean, the guy is 6'2", 6'3", or so. But nevertheless, you take a look at that D line. I mean, there are guys out there 310 pounds and about six foot five. Yeah, there's some big bodies taking up a lot of windows and they get an arm up, it can, uh, it can impact the game as we saw on that play. All right, Joe through the line, the lone setback, motion goes to the right, quads on that side once again, there's the snap. Looking downfield, he has some room to run, but he throws it instead, passes incomplete according to the Colts. Let's see what the referee rules. It is ruled complete, the pass for Tristan Schultenkamper. We just talked about the battle in the trenches in the uh, O-line of the cast did an outstanding job giving him protection. Quarterback slid up into the pocket that he had and he delivered a great ball in a real tight window. All right, Schultenkamper, the Jasper Place Rebel grad with his first catch of the game. There's the handoff to Jozu. Jo Bray Jozu is held up once again at the line of scrimmage. I think he may have run into his own man, uh, the uh, offensive offensive lineman number 84, uh, Davis Bishop. Yeah, there's not much running room there up front. It's uh, credit to them, though, sticking with the run, trying to establish that. It's so important in a game, especially if, uh, if there's showers in the forecast, you're gonna wanna be able to run the ball. So we'll see what they have here on second and long. All right, motion this time goes to the left. Back in the pocket, looking downfield once again. There's the pass. It is incomplete behind the intended receiver, Brandon Quash. He got a flag on the far side, and again, that uh, that pocket was great. If they're gonna if they're gonna be able to pass protect like that all night, we may see a little bit more throwing and less running. But, but he had a lot of time to deliver that. Unfortunately, it was dropped. That offensive uh, line has been 
almost opening a, a hole for uh, for uh, Colton Hippie, and he's had he's had the chance to run in the last two plays, really. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see that pretty soon, although we did talk about a little bit earlier before the show that he likes to stay in the pocket and just throw the ball, so we'll, uh, we'll find out if he's going to take off and run tonight. Okay, it'll be third down and about 13 yards for the first down, so obviously a punting situation for the Wildcats with 11.02 to go in the first quarter. It's the Calgary Colts 7, the Edmonton Wildcats, no score. Need to make sure they shore up their blocking up front here and get this punt off. All right, here's the kick. It's a spiraling punt down to about the 25-yard line. It'll bounce out of bounds at the, mark, they'll mark it out at the 25, and it'll be first down for the Calgary Colts deep in their own zone. I think we got maybe a no yards call too to add on, so it's gonna be a little bit better field position. Looks like Darcy's out there arguing that the ball was out of bounds. <laughs> it was pretty close. I don't know if he touched it before he was stepping on the sideline or not. Darcy, Darcy's not going to give it up. No, he's not. That was a nice punt, out of yep. bounds, angled to the side, no return. Be a shame. It looks like they're uh, spotting the ball right there. Guys, Coach Park definitely has a case here. That was about about three yards in front of me and it was definitely out of bounds but it's uh one thing in talking to coach park right before the game guys he was talking about establishing confidence and making sure the colton hippie was comfortable back there and so far he looks pretty good all right kevin donnan thank you very much for that first down for the calgary colts the ball is on their own 25 yard line motion goes to the right moving that way is dylan schrott Here's the handoff up the right side, breaking through to the secondary is number one, Xavier Ramsey. And Ramsey will pick up a gain of close to 20 yards on the play and a first down from their own 40. That's a great way to settle down a young quarterback. If you can uh, run the ball a little bit, just let him hand it off. And that uh, when you can take 15 or 20 yards in big chunks like that, that's, uh, that's gonna help your quarterback. All right, we have an injured receiver down uh, on the uh, about the 35 yard line looks to be number 12, uh, Richard Sindani. And he will be, I was gonna say helped off the field, but it looks like he'll be able to make it off on his own steam. Sindani, as I mentioned, one of uh, three recruits from CIS. The uh, Colts have a very good working relationship with the uh, Calgary Dinos. And it's certainly paid off in spades, actually for both teams. Yeah, I think that's an important relationship for these teams to have with the uh, local university teams uh, just to get the best players on the field for both teams, and obviously they help each other out. Wazdal in the shotgun. Hand off, left side this time, taken there by number 21, Dylan Minchel. Nice run up the middle again, the hole opened up. I think he probably got the four or five yards before he was touched. But they've got to convert second down here. And again, you take a look at that offensive line for the uh, uh, for the Calgary Colts, and they are big boys. There's no question. And I, they probably outweigh uh, the uh, the D line of the Cal uh, the Edmonton Wildcats by maybe 10 pounds or so. Yeah, I would average. say I would say at least that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, over center, handoff, left side once again, and once again it is Dylan Minshew and the Brandon native. Plows forward for a gain of about seven yards, and it'll be enough for the first down. They'll mark the ball at about the 51-yard line, still in Calgary territory, with 9-10 to go in the first quarter. Now that old line for the Colts reminds me of the Senior Bowl the last couple of years that I've been involved with. It. They, uh, they were big boys across the line, so we'll see uh, how the Cats uh, adjust with the uh, Hoggies moving the pile a little bit here. All right. Wazdo really mixing things up uh, over center, and now... Out of shotgun, single setback. There is a flag. It looks like it'll probably be too maybe, much time. Maybe time count, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think they took a little too much time. And again, maybe another sign of a young quarterback, just making sure everything's right. Uh, it's important for coaches to get the plays in early to just give them a little bit more time to, uh, to, get, to get set, see the defense, see what the defense is doing. I'm sure he doesn't want to make a mistake that he started the game with, so. You know, it, it was interesting talking with uh, Coach Matt Blocker before the game. Apparently, the media and a lot of other people down in Calgary are calling these guys to finish in the bottom half of the, of the, sta of the, of the standings this year because of all the changes, particularly on defense. So he, he says he's out to prove that they're wrong and that they will go to a national championship this year. 
Back in the pocket, there's the pass. It is incomplete and uh, intended there for uh, Ramsey. That, did that look like a lateral to you? It was pretty close. Uh, I think in the end it may have gone forward. Um, he definitely had to get it up over the D lineman's hands, which is a great job by the D lineman. Otherwise he may have been uh, off to the races a little bit, but D lineman got his hands up, had to put a little bit too much air on it, just went right over the running back. That was number 90 for the, uh, for the Wildcats. Uh, Akil Ambrose over there on the right side. Big, tall, lanky rush end. Back in the pocket now. There's the draw, the handoff. It is to number one, Xavier Ramsey. And once again, Ramsey is able to plow ahead for a gain of close to about 10 yards. He may be about uh, three short of the uh, first down. Flag on the play. That was a good call, a little draw there. Um, they had a lot of space between the secondary and the linebackers. Uh, they were dropping pretty deep to make sure they defended the second and 16 play. The draw almost got them there, so we'll see what they do here. They'll probably... Offside well, both sides. <laughs> well, well, there you go. Both of them are moving a little bit. First game jitters, I guess, for both sides. Now, in a case like that, was that something that, uh, that Wazdell may have read, or do you think that that was called in the huddle? Uh, that's probably a, a, a wise coach calling a good play on a second and long, not making the quarterback throw the ball, knowing he's got to get 16 yards or whatever. So, you know what, I'm sure that was called from the sideline. It was a good call. We'll see what they can do here. Now they got to replay that down at six, or second and 16. Sure, the coach gives the coach all the credit. Nice. <laughs> Well, I know if I was coaching, I wouldn't give my first-year quarterback a whole <laughs> lot to think about when he's lining up in his first game. There you go. All right, out of the shotgun once again. Ramsey, the setback. Everybody up. Back in the pocket, being hurried, and it will be a pass complete to Xavier Ramsey. Ramsey has it. He's close to the first down and is finally taken down. Ball's out, catch the ball. The ball is loose. And boy, I'll tell you what. That was a gong show right from the beginning. You know what, that was that was a tough thing. Quarterback got rid of it, got it to the running back, turned in the favor of the Colts, and then he took a hard hit there. Ball came out. That's a great job on the Cats getting the second turnover. Isaiah Brown with the uh, recovery for the Wildcats. Not sure who was rushing from the right end, but from the right side. It may have been uh, number 90 again, uh, uh, Akil Ambrose uh, coming in on that right side, that rush end. Yeah, I think it was, and then it was 21 forcing that ball out. All right, from the shotgun now, the Wildcats with the ball up the middle. Josu is taken down at about the 35-yard line. He'll pick up a gain of close to 17 yards in the first down, and the Wildcats are on the move. There you go. That's definitely the run play they wanted to uh, get going and establish a little routine here, a little bit of tempo. See, they're going hurry up, too. They're not in the huddle. All right. Ray Josu is again the, lane, the lone setback. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. There's the handoff once again, and he has He's some room. He's pulled it, off the quarterback goes. He fooled me, I'll tell you that. And there goes Colton Hippie down to close to the 20-yard line. He'll gain close to uh, 15 yards. What a great fake on that play. If we can, if we can uh, get that one again, it was just a super, super play by Colton Hippie. I think he had, well, I know he had me fooled. He had half the uh, Calgary Colts fooled as well. You know, it was a great little read option. He had the choice, and knowing he just ripped off 20 or 15 yards on the previous play, did a great job pulling it, had lots of room to run for first down. All right. It is first and 10 from the 20-yard line, just outside the red zone. Rolling to his left. There's the pass. It is incomplete. And it was intended for number 85 of the uh, Wildcats, and that is Bishop da or Dav Davis Bishop. Wonder if that ball play. got tipped at the line of scrimmage. It kind of came out pretty, uh, pretty wobbly, and definitely didn't get to its target. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see if that got tipped. It looks like one of the D linemen again. Those big, big D linemen got a hand up and uh, hand on the ball. All right, let's see what the ref has. Penalties are becoming a problem on this drive for the Calgary Colts. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just giving uh, the Wildcats a few extra yards working. Now we're going to first and five. That really opens the playbook up for uh, for the offense to, to run a number of different plays and, and uh, maybe take a shot at the end zone here as they get close. They're in the red zone at the 16-yard line. Colton Hippie engineering this series with a little help from the uh, orange flags. 
Motion goes to the left. And again, we have a flag. You've got timeouts. I think they're gonna run out of time and so Darcy took the timeout here from the bench to uh, save themselves five yards. I think he could see that uh, Hippie was trying to uh, control everybody in the backfield, put them or tell them to go this or and, and uh, place them. And obviously he was running out of time and Darcy saw that. Yeah, that's good. It's good on Darcy to see that and uh, get their guys in the right position, give them the best chance to succeed. It's been interesting how they've been moving the pocket around. The first few uh, passes that were successful downfield, he just had tons of room right at the middle. And then that last pass that uh, happened to be a penalty, but he uh, slid too. He was a little slide protection there. So he was able to move his feet. And then he also saw that play action. And it wouldn't surprise me if they came back with a play action pass at some point, if they can continue to run the ball with some consistency. We're down to 6.06 to go here in this uh, first quarter. The uh, Calgary Colts, by uh, virtue of a touchdown will now lead by a score of seven to nothing an early touchdown in the first couple of minutes but since then the uh, the Wildcats despite some adversity in those first uh, two or three minutes have really come back have looked very very strong both offensively and defensively there's the handoff to Bray Josu once again he's at the 10 runs into his own man and is tripped up just shy of the five yard line they'll probably be marked down at about the seven yard line ran into uh, uh, one of his uh, slot backs, I believe it was uh, number eight, uh, Brandon Olson. Well, they're definitely establishing the run here on this drive, and I think it's making a huge difference. Gives the quarterback confidence. Um, you got first and goal here. They're going to got two shots to get this one in, but that run game is going to make a huge difference. They can keep that going. Shilton Camper, late, uh, way to the right side, flanked outside, and it is fumbled back in the backfield. It is picked up by the Calgary Colts. And I don't think anybody is going to catch this D lineman. Taken down, nice block, and he's at the 20, 10, in for the touchdown. Number 99, Justin Sambu, recovering that fumble from Colton Hippie and taking it, uh, what, about 100 yards for the yeah, touchdown? Yeah, about 100 yards. Fortunately, there's a flag. I don't know which way it's going to go, but that. Uh, Maybe a good thing may not for the uh, Cats tonight, but that was a long ways to run. <laughs> for a D lineman especially. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're gonna have to send someone on the field if that defense stays on here, I'm not sure. It's against the Calgary Colts, and they'll take the ball all the way back to the seven yard line, and wow. Well, that's a, that's a huge break uh, for the Cats tonight, you know, to give up one early one on a block punt. That would have been really tough after the long drive, and uh, we'll see uh, see what's happening here. It looks like the defense of the Cats is coming on the field, so maybe there was an illegal block. So it takes the touchdown away, not the turnover. And it's from point of infraction. They put the ball down to point of infraction. Yeah, I imagine that's what it is. I didn't uh, I didn't pick up the call. Okay, but it is a turnover. It just isn't a touchdown. That's right. The bad news and the good news. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's see if the defense can respond here. The defense of the Cats have been playing really well. They've done their job. So let's see if they can respond and uh, get the ball back in the hands of the offense. Again, from the 25 yard line, same place they started from last series. There's the handoff left side. And again, taken there by number 21, Dylan Minshaw. And Minshaw plows his way up way, all the way to about the 52 yard line. It's about another 25 yards on the ground by the wow. Colts. Just keeps going. They've got such a great running back combination with uh, Minshaw and Ramsey. Minshaw, the bigger of the two, but he's quick to the hole and uh, proved it that time too. So yeah. at, at the 50 yard line, it's first and 10 for the Colts. Now they are on the move over center. Bailey Wasdell, twin setback, second man through, handoff right. And it is Minshaw once again and he will uh, gain about five yards on the play. Stopped on a nice tackle there by, uh, uh, in on the tackle was number 70 for the uh, uh, Wildcats, uh, Travis Lou, the veteran from Wataskawa. And 21, Jaden Log did a great job coming out of the halfback position, I think, to fill that hole and really stop uh, the contact, fill the hole, stop the running back initial contact, and then the defense uh, followed. So here we go, second in about six that they're gonna have to work with here. All right. Single setback is Minshaw. Now he moves to the right. Everybody goes downfield. Looking to the right there, the pass is complete. And it is complete to number 82. 
Yeah, only got Thomas about Bennett. a yard, only got about a yard or two on that. You know what? That's a, a simple screen pass and hoping your receiver can make somebody miss. Uh, the Cats number 22 did a great job just getting by the guy coming out to block him and then uh, got on the receiver right away. That's the best way to defend a screen. If you can get into the backfield and not give him time to make a move and get into open space, that's the best way to stop that. Isaiah Brown reading that one nicely. Limiting that gain to about a yard or two. So it'll be third and uh, close to five yards. Punting situation. Ready to do the kicking is Steven Fabian. Fabian, a much traveled kicker. Played with the Golden Bears last year. Gets a high spiraling kick all the way down to about the 15 yard line. Taken there by number 12. I think we may have too many men on the field on the Cats. I just did a quick count and there's a flag coming from uh, behind the returners, which is usually the guy who, uh, who counts the players. Alex Vlander, number 13, was actually the man who took that punt. Now, looks like this is going against the Cats, so uh, decent little return. I think it's gonna go for not. We'll see what happens here. That's a tough one. That's a penalty that's going to give the uh, Colts a first down. Too many men on the field, 10 yard penalty in because they were second and six. Or third and six, I guess it was, third and four. Whatever it was there, um, they got the first down out of it. So that's a tough break for the Cats defense. They've been uh, playing really well. Little special, that's two special teams mistakes that have really cost them uh, a possession here. Ball down at the 45 yard line in Wildcats territory with 2.57 to go in the first quarter. Lankers go to the left. Out of the shotgun once again is Bailey Wasdell. He has Minchel in the backfield. Minchel take us, takes it to the right side, breaks through one tackle, breaks another, and picks up a gain of about uh, five, six yards on the play. Another good, good first down run. Giving your quarterback a chance to work with very manageable uh, second down yardage. The Colts, uh, the Wildcats have been able to, to get in behind that, uh, that offensive line, but the quickness of Minshew uh, getting to the hole, he's, they, they just can't catch him in time. Yeah, the maybe, uh, maybe they're trying to run around some of the big hoggies that the Colts have, and it's just creating holes. All right, there's the snap, the handoff left side this time. And Minshew carries it ahead for another gain of close to eight yards, seven yards on the play. It was a good job of number 70, Travis Louvre making the play. He was uh, had a blocker blocking him. He just slid off his block, made the, made the tackle, unfortunately, not before the first down. You know, it's interesting watching the two offenses, if you compare them to last year. Uh, both these teams uh, were passing teams last year, especially the Wildcats uh, with uh, Jordan Olsen. Uh, throwing the ball, I, I think it was 238 times last year. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that may be partly as a result with young quarterbacks and some very talented running backs it looks like we have tonight to watch. Mm -hmm. Looks like there was a penalty on the Colts. I think it was offside, maybe another receiver offside. So it's going to bring it back and give the Colts another chance to stop on second down. All right, it is second and uh, we'll say about nine, we call it eight. Ball on the 43-yard line, 206 to go. We had an injured... Colts player. He's at the bench, and I, I'm not sure if we have a timeout here or. You can see on the other side uh, through our expert camera work from uh, Dave Foley that uh, there is a pretty good contingent here from Calgary. Yeah, nice they made to see. the trip up the t Highway 2 to, to come cheer on their boys in their first, uh, first, or first season game. One thing uh, that has been mentioned a number of times in the media is the increase in fan support uh, for the Calgary Colts this year it's, uh, and last year because of their success. Obviously, that has a lot to do with it. Yeah, success can breed uh, a little bit more fans in the stands, which is good, and that encourages the players. Obviously, you want to have family out and, uh, and the community members out as well. Over center, the fake to Ramsey. The pass, it is incomplete in and out of the hands of Minshew being covered on the play nicely by Isaiah Brown, who has just been outstanding, and he's been in on uh, two or three coverages now that, uh, that have been busted. He seems to be making plays all over the field. What a great athlete he is out there. He's making, chasing running backs down and filling the hole. Has no problem putting his head in there. Another Bev Facey grad. 
And so the special teams will come out onto the field. Down there to receive this kick at about the uh, five yard line is uh, number 22, Isaiah Brown, once again. And uh, as well, number 13 is uh, Alex Vilander. There's the kick, another high spiraling punt at the goal line. Taken there by Vlander, up to sidelines and finally knocked out of bounds at about the uh, 10 yard line. In there on the tackle was number 35, Ryan McNeely. That was a good job by the returner to stay in bounds. It was right at the one yard line, almost the perfect punt. We ended up coming up and making, uh, get about eight or 10 yards out of it. Give uh, a little bit more space for the offense to work. We'll see if the Cats can put another drive here together. They got a long field, but you know, if they can get a few first downs and get a little bit of momentum with their uh, hurry up offense, uh, they can uh, put another drive together and this, hopefully this time they can convert into points. Minute 19 to go in the first quarter. First and 10, ball on the 10 yard line. Colton Hippie in at quarterback. A little bunch formation on the right hand side. And they go that way with the handoff to Bray Josu and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage, but there is, uh, I believe, a flag on the play. I had Bunch on the right-hand side in that formation. It's interesting they ran away from it, and unfortunately, both receivers on the narrow side of the field here, they uh, missed their blocks. Josie made a ma nice little inside shoulder move, bounced to the outside, unfortunately beat the three guys inside, but the two DBs uh, did a great job getting off their blocks to make a tackle. We'll see what this penalty has. Holding is the call against the Wildcats. So the ball, ball goes down to the five yard line. Yeah, now they're operating really out of the shadow of the goal post there. Into the final minute of play in the first quarter. Calgary Colts leading the Edmonton Wildcats by a score of seven to nothing. A handoff once again, and once again there is a flag on the play, and this, this will probably be another time count violation unless there was contact on the line. I didn't see any. It looks like it may be time count. The fortunate thing is it only cost them a couple yards because they're so close to their goal line. So they'll mark it at about the two and a half or so with 46.3 seconds to go in the first quarter. Seems like the playbook for the Cats is still a little bit wide open. They can run the ball, they can do a little bit of play action. Their quarterback seems to be a little bit more uh, settled in maybe than the Colts quarterback. A little hesitant to throw down field right now. So we'll see if they can uh, put a tough drive together here working out of their goal line. Okay, twin setbacks, motion goes to the right. Back in the pocket, looking downfield and tackled from behind for the safety. Colton Hippie couldn't get that one away in there to uh, one of the one of the tacklers anyway was number 94 Chris Schwartz and he's I believe another pickup from uh, from CIS yeah, he did have time unfortunately he double clutched obviously the coverage uh, made him change his mind about throwing the ball downfield and then uh, O-line just couldn't hold up long enough so it is a safety with 29.6 seconds to go in the uh, first quarter and the Calgary Colts now lead this one by a score of nine to nothing. And a couple of uh, couple of good breaks, couple of bad breaks. Unfortunately, the Wildcats on their good breaks just were unable to capitalize. And that's really the story of the first quarter. It is, they haven't been able to put up points on the board and they really uh, haven't had a chance. They actually, uh, credit to number 94 on the Colts. He did a great job of actually splitting a double team, eventually getting to the quarterback. So that's, uh, that's what the, the Cats are trying to do is hold their Holder D. Lyman with some double teams. Unfortunately, that's the guy who uh, got to the quarterback after he double clutched the ball. Now, of course, with the safety, the Wildcats will be kicking away from their own 35 yard line. Matt Zeroni from McNally High School, 6'1, 170, 19 years old, still has a few years left in the junior football. This, I believe, is his second second year with the team. So Zeroni lines things up. Gets a good end over end kick down to about the 22 yard line. Up to the 30, 35, taken down on a 
high tackle, but a good tackle from Cameron Mashmeyer, the Bruderheim prospect. That was a great job on the cover team. A little bit longer field that time, a little bit shorter kick, but they kept them inside the 40 on that return. That was a good job giving the defense a little bit of space to work. They've been playing really well tonight. They need to continue to do that, give their offense a chance to, uh, to get things going again, like that one long drive they had. All right, they'll mark the ball at the 39-yard line. It's going to be interesting if the Colts go to the air. They have really, st after that pick, they really stayed away from any down downfield passing. They've been running, and they've also been uh, throwing the swing passes, but nothing downfield. Quads right. There's the outlet pass to Ramsey. Ramsey along the sideline, still going, and is called out of bounds at around, uh, I think they call it about the midfield stripe, but we'll see where they mark it down. Oh, they bring it all the way back to the 45-yard line. So a gain of close to six yards on the play, it'll be second. That was Jaden Dalkin on the tackle again. He just got enough of him to knock him out of bounds. That was a big play again. He seems to be everywhere on the field tonight. Well, we talked earlier about uh, the DBs, uh, Jaden Dalkin being one of them, and uh, um, of course, uh, Tony. Tony Savchuk and Isaiah Brown all in there, all doing a great job, and uh, it's, it's something that uh, has to be a positive for, for Coach Darcy Park. Yeah, having a defense that just, especially early in the season when you're gonna try to get a young quarterback ready to play, you know, he's put a good drive together and he has a couple short, short two and outs. So we'll, uh, we'll see if the defense can hold. They've been on the field quite a bit. It's been a pleasure to watch, but uh, they're gonna need to uh, get to the sideline to get a little bit of rest. They mark the ball down just shy of the center field stripe at about the 54 yard line, but we'll wait for the call from the official. Another flag on the play. It looks like it's going against the Colts. It's probably going to move them back. I think it may have been unnecessary roughness. We'll see what they come back with. Been a lot of flags thrown early in this game. Which to some degree can be expected early in the year. You know, some changes on both sides of the ball for the from a personnel perspective. Guys getting the jitters out. And nope. maybe, maybe some new officials too. Yeah, you know, we may have some new <laughs> officials. We'll see. <laughs> All right, it is called against the uh, Colts, and they will be bringing this one back 15 yards. All the way back to about the 30-yard line. And here's another one of those breaks that we were talking about for the, uh, for the Wildcats. Well, it'll be interesting. I mean, you can run a swing pass, you can run a draw, which we've kind of seen quite a bit of now. We haven't really seen much throwing downfield. A little gun shy there. Uh, Maybe from the coach's perspective, I think the coach may be a little bit gun shy with his, his <laughs> new quarterback. Second and 20 for the Colts. Sideline pass, it is complete. On the far side, taken there by Richard Sindani, and Sindani goes nowhere, picks up a gain of about maybe five or six yards in on the tackle for the uh, Wildcats was number 25, Nolan Hunt. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of second and 20 plays that uh, have a high percentage of success. So uh, you know what, keep it simple. Don't let a mistake happen. Let the special teams come in. They've got a great punter. You know what, let them punt the ball away. Uh, don't make a mistake and uh, make the Wildcats offense put another drive together. All right, that is the end of the first quarter of play. And it is the Calgary Colts leading the Edmonton Wildcats by a score of nine to nothing. And I, I, I guess if I'm Darcy Park, I'm probably taking some positives out of that first quarter. Uh, defensively, the team played exceptionally well. Yeah, they have been playing well. The offense actually put a decent drive together as well. So, you know, there are some positives and there's a couple mistakes. Down, down here on the Wildcat sidelines, guys, one thing we talk about these young quarterbacks and how poised they are, uh, Colton Hippie walking up and down sideline telling his guys okay you know what we've got this let's stay confident let's stay in this ball game don't let the bad breaks get you down we can get through this all yeah right, I, think, I think that's a great attitude to have good good to see leadership from the young quarterback all right thanks kev here's the punt there is another flag and it's this uh, short spiraling kick out of bounds just over the 50 yard line in edmonton territory Want to thank some of the Edmonton Wildcats corporate sponsors, uh, Dental Choice, Flamin Fitness, On the Rocks, McElhenney Consulting Services, JC Boiler Service, Rough Rider International, and of course, WestJet. That's always great to have uh, a backing of sponsors with any organization. It's good to see the Cats have theirs, their supporters. 
And if I may say, WestJet is one of the better ones. They, uh, they are very, very good around the, uh, in the community. Yeah, WestJet does a lot around Edmonton and probably around the country, really. They'll mark the ball at about the 44-yard uh, line. That was offside on. Uh, over again. <laughs> it was offside on the Cats, so five extra yards. It's unfortunate because that punt was not a great punt. That really would have helped the Cats get in, in their field position. We'll see what happens here. All right, no flags on this one. Here's an end over end kick down at the 40 yard line. It is going to bounce out of bounds at about the 43. So a, a good uh, good field position for the Wildcats to start. Yeah, you know what? That punt wasn't any better than the last one. So Cats are in a great position. Uh, if they can get a couple first downs, they really need to try to get some points on the board on this drive. They've uh, put a couple first downs together on that last drive. March the field aided by a few penalties, but again, they have no points to show for it. Brandon Quash uh, trying that, uh, that inside uh, hole to uh, uh, hurry the punter and, and, and got very close to him. Yeah, he got quickly into the backfield, couldn't get past the second row, so we'll see if they send an edge guy at some point in time. Hippie fakes the handoff, rolls to his left, looking downfield, long spiral, and there's got to be there a, we go. There yep. is interference. There's actually three flags on the play, two for interference down uh, on the, the 30-yard line, and there's another flag down here uh, closer to the line of scrimmage. So we'll wait and see. We know what one's going to be. We'll wait and see what the other is. Yeah, we talked about a few different looks. We had some passes coming out of the pocket. We had them slide a little bit in protection. And there's our uh, the run game paying dividends with a little bit of play action. Bought him a lot of time. And he showed me something. Uh, on, on the move, running, long, good, spiraling pass. Yeah, you know what? you got to give a lot of credit to the receiver, number one, Tristan Shulton, Shulton Camper. He did a great job of stopping coming back to the ball. If he wouldn't have done that, the flags wouldn't have come out. It would have been second down, but he did a great job fighting back to the ball. All right. Let's see what uh, the officials have decided. Unnecessary roughness and pass interference. That totals up to 30 yards. Yeah, well, here we go. That's an, another big break. They're really uh, getting into scoring position here. We need the Cats to, uh, to execute some more plays here. That's a good job on their offense. Obviously, that leadership is helping, and we'll see what they can do with this opportunity. Got to believe Coach Matt Blocker is just steaming over on that side of the field. Yeah, he's, def he's definitely not going to be happy when they march half the field in, uh, in one play because of penalties. All right, motion goes to the left. There's the handoff. Bray Josu has a hole up the middle and is taken down at the 25-yard line after a gain of close to 20 yards. That quick opener, and nobody's better at that than Bray Josu. Well, there weren't a whole lot of linebackers left. They brought one guy off at each edge, and again, when that happens and you break the first line, those D linemen couldn't get their hands on him, and away he goes. Good job working the run game, really establishing that run game. They really committed to it, and now it's paying dividends, even though it kind of got... They lost yards probably on the first two or three runs of the game is now uh, paying off for them and they're doing a good job. Credit to the Wildcats coaching staff calling the plays from the from the sidelines and from the, uh, the booth up here. Here's the handoff and he wasn't fooling anybody. They hand off to Bray Josu and in there wrapping him up in those big arms is number 94, Chris Schwartz. It looks like that's that same read option we saw earlier go in the other direction where he pulled it and had a lot of room to run. You could tell he was watching the D lineman a little bit indecisive, ended up giving it to the running back. All right, a loss of about three yards on the play. 12.52 to go here in the first half. It's 9-0 in favor of the Calgary Colts over the Edmonton Wildcats. You're watching Prairie Football Conference brought to you on the ProCast by ICU Video. Out of the shotgun. We're running out of time again. Yeah. And I guess that's got to be expected with a, a rookie quarterback, his first start in the PFC. Uh, you got to believe that uh, maybe things just aren't going exactly the way he wants them to at this point. Well, well, it's one of those things in practice. It's hard to simulate. It's not often you have a coach counting the 20 seconds from the play clock. So it's one of those things they're going to have to get used to. They're going to have it in and out of the huddle in a hurry, along with making sure the coaches get the plays in. All right. Shotgun. Ray Josu, the lone setback. Three to the left, looking that way and now looking right. There's the pass, it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Brandon Quash. He had that, oh, make that uh, number eight, 
uh, Brandon Olson, and he had well, he had touchdown all the way on that one. Well, I think he probably saw the uh, defender from this side coming across, although he didn't hit him. I think uh, he catches that. He walks into the end zone. We have an injured Calgary Colts player down. Now that's a couple drop passes by the Cats uh, receivers and running backs. I think we saw one earlier, and that's tough when uh, second and long made the great throw. I mean, it was, a t again, another tight window. Number of guys around it dropped it right in there as the guy came across the field. Unfortunately, it was dropped. Otherwise, it would have been either a first down and, and goal or, def or a touchdown. He almost walks in there. All right, James Barnsley, the uh, kicker for the Edmonton Wildcats, will be trying a field goal from about the 38-yard line or so. Calgary, one of their big D linemen, appears to be injured. We'll get a number for you as soon as we can. I think that's. Uh, I think that may be 99. It may be cramping up from that 100-yard uh, sprint he had earlier to the end zone. <laughs> Justin Sambu. Seems like the defensive line on the Colts came out really strong, stopping the run. Um, and then, you know what, they haven't been able to get to the quarterback as they throw the ball. And then, of course, we've seen the run game start to get established as well. They may get tired a little bit here, and that's uh, definitely helping the Wildcats, uh, Wildcats offense here. I mean, other than the mistake on a drop pass, this drive is continuing. One of the things to consider down down at field level, guys, is it is still, we've got a little bit of a breeze down here, but it is still very, very warm, and that's that's got to be contributing, too. I mean, the, the Colts bench is right in the sunlight, and uh, it, it's very it's still very, very warm down here. That's still warm up here, too. <laughs> you're, not, you're not using that umbrella for shade, are you, Kevin? Oh, just about. <laughs> it's almost that warm, but it's a gorgeous night. Well, uh, here on the season it, opener. I wouldn't want you to bring it here for no reason. Well, of course. <laughs> well, it never rains on the day Rozak plays golf. So there you go. it never rains when Rozak plays golf. Yeah, but I didn't golf today. <laughs> All right. The injured player is, as you as you mentioned, number 99, Justin Sambu. And he looks like he is favoring his uh, right leg. So he'll come off under his own steam. I'm not sure how many guys could uh, go stand next to him and actually help him get off the field. That's, a, <laughs> that's one big boy out there. You got it. Six foot three, 310 pounds. All right, this is it. A field goal from the 42 yard line with the breeze. Jim Barnsley. Ball is out, it's down, it's up. It's got the length that is going to be wide to the right, taken deep in the end zone, out over the goal line to the 10, and knocked out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. And again, there is another flag. Oh, I thought that was a flag, it isn't, it's down marker. So the Wildcats will come away from that drive empty handed and still trail by a score of nine to nothing. Yeah, that's tough on a it's tough on a team when you have two uh, two opportunities in the score zone, you come away with no points. Again, they're going to be leaning heavily on the the star-studded defense here to make some more plays. If they can uh, if they can keep the Colts at bay here, they're going to have another chance to be in pretty decent field position. Now, don't forget to stay with us at halftime. Kevin Donnan will be uh, a busy young man, talking with uh, head coach Darcy Park just uh, before halftime starts. There's the pass, it is complete at the 32 yard line, taken there by number 88, Cole Bazinet. And Bazinet will pick up close to 17 yards on the play. That was a good little job uh, by the receivers, the combo. One guy ran the fake screen, which drawed the half back in, which opened up the slant in behind. So good little call after running a handful of screens over the last few uh, series. 11.30 to go in the first half. Nine nothing for the Colts. Ball is on their own 35-yard line. Another flag on the play as the handoff goes left to Mitchell. And Mitchell is taken down after a gain of about five or six yards. Uh, the tackle made by number 25, Nolan Hunt. The, uh, the, the linebackers and the secondary have been in on a lot of tackles. They've been really, really close to, tonight. I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, that secondary is busy not only in coverage but supporting the run. It doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of throwing downfield at least for now so they're going to have to be active uh, 
active in that secondary, coming up, filling the holes, forcing second downs. Bet you that's something we can look forward to in the, first, in the second half, though. I think so, yeah. All right, it is uh, first down. I think it was a uh, five-yard penalty against the defense. I'm not sure if it was offside or not, so they're going to get to redo that down five yards further up. First and five. Ball on the 39-yard line. Bailey Wasdell, snap is high, he pulls it down, hands it off to Mitchell. Mitchell has a ton of room on the right side, gets by a couple of tacklers, still going, and is finally run out of bounds, just shy of about the 40-yard uh, line. Great oh, run by Mitchell. We got a flag directly across the field from us sitting around the 48-yard line. Not sure if it was a, it may have been an illegal block, so although they probably got yards gained on that, it may be uh, coming back and reducing some of the damage for All the right, Cats. Let's take a look at this. Whole right side of that line just opened up for him. I think we had an illegal block. One of the D linemen looks like they were trying to get off and chase. And uh, it's going back. 15. No, 10. I guess I was right the yeah, first time. You were right the first time, <laughs> 15 yards. So they gained. The net gain was about five yards, but they do get another first down here, starting at the 46, 45 and a half yard line. So, again, defense is playing well. A couple penalties to help. We'll see what they can do here. 10.50 to go. So we got quads to the wide side of the field here. Everybody heading downfield. There's the handoff. Minshew is taken down at the line of scrimmage, in there to make the tackle. Great play by number 90, Akil Ambrose, once again. Uh, big body inside, being active. They may be a little bit undersized, but they seem to be quick and getting off uh, those blocks. Great job, great athletic play inside. 6'2", 212 pounds. He's from Toronto out of uh, Parkview High School. Well, he's come a long ways, that's good. Obviously enjoys the Western weather. <laughs> On a day like today, you have to. <laughs> Back in the pocket now, looking downfield and being hurried there we go. in there to make the sack is number 46, Taylor Tangen out of Lloyd Minster. You know, great job, great call by the by the coach and a good job executing the play. Defense lined up, I don't know if it was six or seven guys, looked like they were coming, they ended up dropping a few and they overloaded. That was a halfback blitz, came through. Looks like a couple linemen were standing around looking the wrong direction, not, not being able to recognize the blitz early enough. In there, too, was Matt Zeroni coming from the other side. Well, that's an opportunity a defensive coach likes to have. Young quarterback, first game, you're going to send a couple different looks. I think I've seen two or three blitzes, and the, they've got there. There's the punt. It's a high spiraling kick down to about the 32-yard line. It'll be taken there by Alex Vlander. Vlander will run it back for a gain of about maybe 10 yards or so, 12. And they'll mark it down just over the 45-yard line. I like this Alex Vlander. He uh, he he's great on the punt return. Yeah, you know what? He's not afraid to uh, use his speed to get to the edge, and he does a great job setting up the cover guys by coming up field a little bit and then bouncing them to the edge to create a little bit more space. And again, punting is a little bit different. We saw a couple of booming punts in the in the first quarter. The last two or three have not been nearly as as uh, as far, and it's given the Cats an opportunity to take advantage of good field position. Ball on the 44-yard line. Here's the fake. Play action pass complete over on this side. Taken there by 85, Isaac Fanyan, or Fanyan rather, from Bonneville. Great job by number five, Aiden Gelfin, making a play on that. He recognized it quickly, came up, gave him no more yards than just the catch. So a gain of three and a half or four yards, but he did a great job securing the tackle. Put him in a second and a little bit long. Second and seven. For the Wildcats. Flankers to both sides. Four in the backfield. Now the motion goes to the right. Back in the pocket once again. Colton Hippie fires one, complete. Just shy of the 40 yard line, right into the belly of number 81, Luther Akunavanu. Akunavanu. Great job spreading the zone defense, and he filled the, saw the hole the whole way. Big target inside. Good job securing the catch as the tackle was right there to make sure if he didn't catch it the first time, he wasn't going to catch it. Again, passing complete along the sidelines. 
taken there by number 81, Luther Hakunavanu. And uh, I think he's gonna be just shy of the first down by about a yard or so. So that quick play call. Yeah, they're uh, kind of using that hurry up offense, getting the defense tired again. A little bit of a drive going here. The D linemen seem to be subbing in and out. So they're gonna work into their depth stride on the defensive side for the Colts. And the uh, Cats are just uh, moving the ball. It seems a little bit comfortable, a little bit more comfortable than the Colts, Colts offense at this point. All right, this time over center and plowing ahead, still plowing ahead. I don't know if he got it. I think he may have got it on the first push. I don't think he got it on the second. So we'll <laughs> see if they give him the spot. It's gonna be pretty close. Looks like the spot is gonna be, uh, be enough. They'll mark it just shy of the 31 yard line. And I think he needed, that's exactly where he needed to get. They didn't get any more than they needed, but they got enough. <laughs> By the nose of the football. That's about it. <laughs> All right, the drive continues for the Wildcats. Back to the shotgun formation. There's the handoff to Bray Josu. Josu gets into the secondary, still going, and that little fire plug makes it all the way to about the 25 yard line. He does not give up. He makes guys miss and he's big or small. He's gonna, he's gonna run hard each and every time. And that's a, a great weapon to have as a, as a team, as an offense, as a coordinator. Gain of about six yards on the play. He kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Levon uh, Horolak, uh, who played in this league a couple of years ago and I think is uh, currently with the Golden Bears. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got some talent, which is good. Wow. All right, out of the shotgun again. There's the fake, and nobody fooled on that one as uh, number 48 for the uh, Calgary Colts uh, held uh, uh, Jaden Lawson, held Colton Hippie to a loss of a couple of yards on the play. That's unfortunately wow. uh, the drive stalled there on, a, on just a great play by the Calgary Colts, really, to read that. They had enough defenders in the backfield. I think someone on the backside got caught and uh, quarterback's not quite as quick as a running back to make a guy miss in the backfield. Well, when you got some play action going like that, it, it needs to move a little bit quicker than what it did too. Yeah, I think the slot coming across was a little bit slow and it just didn't create the hole. Or running that slot screen at some point in time before that gives it a little bit more of a threat. Doesn't uh, allow the guy to play both players. So Barnsley from about the uh, 34 yard line, right along the hash marks, Gets it up, and again, he's got the length. It is good. And James Barnsley puts the Wildcats on the scoreboard with 5.26 to go in the first half. The Calgary Colts lead by a score of nine to three. Well, another little drive aided by some penalties, but again, they were able to put points on the board, which is probably gonna be a relief for them. But again, I think the offense is looking pretty good. They're able to throw the ball downfield. Their running game is, is working well. I would say, and that sets up a lot of things for the offense. So defense had a little bit of a rest for that drive and they're on the field ready to go again. Let's see if they can uh, make a play and get the ball back uh, for the Cats with a little bit of time before the half. I think what uh, impressed me was uh, the, the confidence shown by Colton Hippie after a couple of uh, instances of adversity early in the, first, uh, in the first quarter. Yeah, he's playing really well tonight uh, considering it's his first game. All right, out of the shotgun, there's the pitch out to this side to Ramsey. Ramsey cuts to the middle and is taken down at about the 40 yard line and uh, grabbing him as he went by was uh, number four, James Enns. Enns uh, flat on his back and the Bev Facey product was able to make, uh, make, the, uh, make the tackle. They had a great little down block by an outside guy on the offense that created a whole lot of running room for that running back and both these running backs on both sides of the ball, you give them space and they're gonna, they're gonna gain yards and gain yards in a hurry. So they're gonna have to sort that out and sure up the edge. All right, a gain of about seven, it'll be second and three. Ball on the 42 yard line. Handoff once again, this time it's Minchel. Minchel crosses the 45 yard line, which is where he needed to be to get the first down. But there is another flag on the play. We actually got through about three plays without a flag. Well, there's one now and we'll <laughs> see what happens here. Offside is going to be the call against the Wildcats. You know, there's a little bit of pressure on the Colts this season and the Wildcats are just trying to fight to uh, to get back in the mix of the league. And I think uh, you're seeing players out there not wanting to be the guy make the mistake. And sometimes that causes the extra holding, a little bit of jumping. 
Well, they've been to that PFC final now two years in a row. And both years, both times losing to the Saskatoon Hilltops, which is nothing to be ashamed of when you get right down to it, the Hilltops and oh, the Regina Rams. That is a quality program out wow. there. Incredible. All right, there's the handoff right side this time to Ramsey. And he carries a couple of Wildcat players with him across the 50-yard line. And that's where they'll mark it down in on the tackle uh, was Tony Sadchuk coming up from his uh, defensive back position again. That was uh, a little bit of mayhem in there afterwards. I think uh, uh, Taylor Visser, he can be excited on the field. I think he was the one who cut through and got first contact. Unfortunately, dragged him three more yards, but he was in the mix of that. And uh, probably something going on under the pile there that upset a few of those players. But that's the emotion of football, and that's why it's such a great game, too. All right, gain of three on the play. It is second and seven. Ball on the 50-yard line in Calgary territory. Ramsey to set back. Fakes, play action, now being hurried, and he will go down at the 38-yard line. I Was think there they're a gonna, fumble on the Well, plate? I think as he went down, that ball rolled out, but I think he probably was in the grass at that point in time. Looks like they've marked it, so he is. He just stayed up and stayed up, and I think as they came on, yeah, he's definitely down before down that ball came. Yeah. yeah. But hey, there's another opportunity. You know what, young guy, a little bit of a, you know, dropping back, and I think that's why they're staying away from the drop back passing. Wildcats are sending a couple extra guys who are disguising who's coming. It's not like they're sending a whole bunch of guys. They line up five or six, and they bring, you know, four of those guys, and they just can't pick them up. Got to say, I, I am impressed with the uh, with the defensive uh, work of uh, the Edmonton Wildcats. They they recruited hard, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, picking up uh, a number of players, a number of linebackers, and uh, of course Tony Sadchuk coming back for his second year after being named Rookie of the Year in the CJFL last year. Um, they are really, really showing well defensively, despite a lack of size as compared to the Calgary Colts. Yeah, they're definitely been coached up well, and they're playing really, really hard with a bunch of athletes. It's great to see. All right, the ball is taken at the 40-yard line and across the 45-yard line. Finally taken down is Alex Vlander, but there is a flag in the play. I think we've got a no-yards call. Yeah, he had to move up to field that, and he had to extend his arms, which is always a dangerous thing for a punt returner, but he did a good job of fielding with a guy close to him. And I think because it was in the air, it may be 15 yards up from there. So they're going to be in great field position with two and a half minutes left here in the half. Get another opportunity to put some points on the board. All right. The ball was marked down at the 38. They march it up to the 54 and a half yard line. And they are now in Calgary territory. Well, that's the third punt in a row that really has not traveled like we saw this punter earlier in the game. So that's uh, now favoring the Wildcats in the field position battle. There is a bit of a breeze, and it is coming out of the north. Uh, Fabian is kicking into it, but I don't think it has, it's that much of a factor if we take a look at the goalposts there and the flags on it. All right, the handoff to Gray Josu, and I, that was really slow in developing. I think there was a, a mix-up in the backfield. The yeah, based on, uh, based on what happened after the play, it looks like the quarterback may have tried to actually pull that out. Uh, running that read option can always be a challenge, and it's about chemistry. And with a, a quarterback starting his first game, some of that chemistry is getting developed over this game. Looked like he wanted to pull it out, but again, if he pulls too hard and the running back holds on too hard, usually the ball ends up on the turf. So that's second and long. We'll see if they convert here. Second and about 12. And again, there'll be a time count violation. I don't know if that's three or four time counts now on the Cats. They're really putting themselves in a tough position here, uh, making them work extra hard to keep this drive alive. So they'll mark it back in Wildcats territory at the 53-yard line. Third and 13. And the punting team will come out. Now the officials are conferring. Uh, it might be a little bit of confusion. Well, it looks like they gave him the loss of down. 
instead of yards because it's in the last couple minutes of the half. We'll see what they talk about here and what uh, comes out of the meeting on the field. 2.10 left in this first half. A meeting of the minds down at about the 45 yard line. It would be a shame if they lost the down, even the chance to convert the second down. Because you know what? They've been attacking downfield, and they've had, a, they've had a decent, they've done a really good job throwing the ball, hitting the holes 15, 18 yards downfield. We had, you know, one drop, which unfortunately stopped the drive or maybe even took a touchdown off the board. But uh, really, they've been doing a good job, and they really have full, uh, full access to their playbook, the way the uh, offense is uh, playing, and the way the quarterback is just settled in. You know, he's confident. You're seeing that on the sideline as he's talking to his players, too. Zeroni is still out there getting ready to punt this one away. All right, so they will mark the ball at the 53 yard line. And it will be third and 13 with 2.10 to go. And the Wildcats will be kicking this one away. Good snap. Great punt. Oh, there's a nice kick. All the way down to the 10 yard line. Taken there by number 19, Jesse Kuntz. Kuntz tries the inside and sweeps across to about the 15 yard line. Nice tackle in there. Uh, downfield by number 58, Regan Thompson out of Hillman, Saskatchewan. Uh, good job on the cover team. Jaden Jaden Dalt got down there again, making first contact, stopping his feet. And I think on any, any coverage team, if you can get contact on a returner early, stop his feet usually you get that second second uh, wave of guys making the tackle they did a good job to give him a real long field here in the last two minutes and credit to uh, zeroni as well a good high spiraling kick gives the uh, defenders plenty of time to get downfield and make that first contact that yeah, was beautiful all right there's the fake play action to this side the pass is complete taken there by number seven dylan schrott schrott still going with it finally taken out of bounds and in there to uh, make the stop was number 22, Isaiah Brown. Yeah, another little safe pass for the quarterback. Let him throw the ball a little bit. Let him get comfortable in the pocket just to open that playbook up a little bit. Great job by the defense. And you can tell these guys have been coached on the defensive side of the ball to come and go after the ball, strip the ball, get it out, because they are hungry for the turnovers and trying to get their offense back on the field here. Ramsey, the lone setback. Back in the pocket, now looking downfield. There's the outlet pass to Ramsey. He avoids one tackler. Now has some room along the sidelines and is taken out of bounds. In there to make the tackle was who else but Tony Savchuk coming up from his DB position. Yeah, it looks like they had the same coverage uh, earlier in the game when they went quads away, isolation on the backside. You know, they brought a lineman around to take care of the DB, so that secondary pursuits the guy who's got to get. Unfortunately, they got the first down. Um, and the Colts seem to be on the move here. Ball is at the 51 yard line, still in Calgary territory with a minute 29 to go. There's the handoff up the middle. Ramsey with a ton of room and is taken down just over the 45 yard line at about the 42 and a gain of close to 17 yards on the play. Uh, it's Sawchuk and uh, Dalk making another play in the secondary. Unfortunately, when DBs are making all your tackles, it means they're probably eight to 10 to more yards downfield. So the linebackers need to start filling the holes and uh, before that guy gets into space. Their running backs are on both sides, like I said, are very dynamic running backs. You get them in space and they're gonna, they're gonna hurt a defense. It'll be interesting to see uh, the individual tackle stats. Jaden Delkey and, uh, and uh, Savchuk, uh, Tony Savchuk have just been in on virtually every play that gets past the linebackers. Yeah, they have. They are everywhere on the field, which again, you need to rely on those guys that are making plays. And, and uh, you know, other guys need to step up and make some plays earlier so it's not always that secondary making the plays in the downfield. Minute 23 left on the clock here in the first half. The well, they've moved quickly into uh, Cats territory here. Mm -hmm. Calgary Colts leading by a score of nine to three. Ball on the Edmonton 43 yard line. Three flankers to the right, two more to the left. 
There's the snap, the handoff to Mitchell, and Mitchell breaks through that line of scrimmage once again and finds the hole and plows ahead for about eight yards. You know, without only a minute 20, you can see the confidence in the run game now with the Colts. They just keep handing the ball off. They're rotating their running backs in, so they're fresh, and they have, uh, they've created some big holes here. We have an injured Wildcat. It looks to be number 47, Taylor Visser, the uh, Grand Prairie product out of St. Joseph's High School, and what a great football program they have. Every yes. single year they seem to be uh, near or in the, uh, the, uh, uh, the senior bowl with yeah. all kinds of players. Yeah, you know what, they've got some talented players up there. They've got a great coaching staff that's uh, coaching the players up well, obviously getting the fundamentals of football to their players and teaching them those things so they continue at the next level. Looks like he might be favoring his left shoulder or left elbow. Well, he's kind of the middle of that defense playing Mack, and uh, you don't want to lose him for very long. Hopefully he'll be ready to go to help this defense stop the Colts. Okay, so that moves the ball down to the 35-yard uh, line. It is second and three, or make that two, with a minute 10 to go in this first half. A good first half of football, too. There's the handoff left side. And Minchel is taken down at about the 15-yard line, a gain of close to 20 yards on the play. Uh, they tried that play on the other side earlier in this, uh, in this quarter and, and, and successfully on this side now. So. Yeah, you know what? They're just, uh, it doesn't seem like the Cats have an answer for this run game on this drive. We'll see what they can do here. And again, they're without their uh, starting middle linebacker now. Minchel is the lone setback. Minchel on the play action. The pass, it is complete on the far side, taken there by number 31, Gabriel Cannon. That's Joseph Gabriel, Jordan Gabriel Cannon. And he oh, moves it ahead. They kept him out of the end zone. There's also a flag sitting in the end zone, so I'm not sure. It came out a little bit late after the catch happened, so I'm not sure if it was legal block or maybe it was illegal contact on a different receiver. All right, we'll wait for the call with 39.3 seconds to go. It looks like they may be calling it against the Colts. Let's wait for the official. You called it, illegal block against the offense. Well, the Colts are getting hungry. Really, this offense hasn't put any points on the board yet this half. It's been defense and special teams that have done all the work uh, from getting the from getting the points and so the Colts are hungry inside the red zone here and now they've backed themselves back to the 25 so we'll see it's uh, first and very long I think it's 20 yards and so this is really plays into uh, plays into the hands of the Wildcats if they can uh, fly around in the secondary here here's the rush the pass it is oh. almost picked off at about the 20 yard line and unable to pull it down was your buddy, Jaden Dalkey. Yeah, Dalkey's playing a whale of a game. You know, he secures that and he is gone. We saw one go the distance by 99 called back and that could have gone uh, just, a, just about the same distance. They're in a tough position here, second and 20. As we talked earlier, there's not a lot of plays in the playbook for it. You know, you probably want to ex expect a draw. Doesn't seem like they're comfortable throwing it downfield yet. 34.4 seconds to go and again, the rush is on and there's that the screen pass. Complete to Ramsey, he's at the 20, still going to the 15, to the 10, and finally tackled at about the five yard line, and that was the other option. You know what, that's it, and get their running backs into space. Great job setting up the screen. Great job of the Hoggies getting out in front of that, allowing them to, uh, allowing them to get bodies on bodies. There's that motion along the offensive line, and... Uh, we had 58, 68 all out in front there. You know, at 58 and 68, it seemed like they were just chasing the running back. <laughs> you know what? He made about four or five guys miss on that play. Tyler Winchester and Brendan Barnes helping out. And on that play, there is another flag. It looked like they were short by about half a yard. I think they probably got the yards, but then the flag came out. So we'll see what happens. I think there's going to be an unnecessary roughness call here. And it's going against Calgary. Well, tough break for the offense. They're really in scoring position with, you know, 
perfect time on the clock, enough to run a few plays to punch this ball in. Now I think they're going to back themselves up. It'll be a lot harder to score with the in the last 24 seconds. Calgary players encouraging each other. And they'll move the ball back to the 10-yard line. Still got lots of time, 24 seconds. Well, it's third down, so I think it happened uh, It happened before any yards were gained. Still don't know what the call was. Third and 11. I think they're uh, not sure if they have a field goal unit out. I think no. they got their third and seven on the 12 yard line. And I don't know if I saw. It was five yards, whatever the penalty was. It's third and 11 now. Yeah, I think they got that wrong on the score clock. I think it's, it's third and seven from the, oh no, we, no, it's fourth down and uh, <laughs> we're in the wrong country. I know it's hot today, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> looks like it must have been after the first down was gained. So now they're first down and 10 from the 12 yard line, it looks like. So their offense is on the field. You know, enough time really to run probably three plays and I wouldn't be surprised if they go right back to the run game. First and 10. Motion goes to the right. Minshall is in the backfield. Back in the pocket. Now being hurried. The ball is out. It is picked up by the Wildcats. You know what? And Quarter quarterbacks the looking the other way. Logan Schlamp recovering the fumble. I don't. I think that may have been Tony Sawchuk again coming off the edge. Quarterback was looking the other direction, and then ball comes out. I will right, we'll take a look at this in replay. And you're right. No, that wasn't Tony. That was uh, 42. That was a great job of not only getting the quarterback, but also having a chance to uh, get that ball out. And really, I mean, the Cats have a little bit of opportunity. It'll be interesting to see if they take in the year, if they take a shot here. It looks like they're staying in tight, so it looks like they're just going to go into the half. So they'll run the clock down, run it out with 14.3 seconds to go. They trail by a score of nine to three. And they'll head to the dressing room. I got a funny feeling, feeling pretty good about themselves. We'll talk more about that as this uh, halftime begins here at uh, Clark Park. Stay with us, uh, Kevin Donnan will be talking with uh, head coach Darcy Park of the Edmonton Wildcats. And uh, as that comes along, you gotta believe, I think that the, the Wildcats, after stopping the, the Colts late in this first half, have gotta be feeling pretty good going into the dressing You know, I think so. They may have gained some momentum that hopefully they can capitalize on in the second half as it starts. So we're just waiting for Kevin to uh, pick up on on Darcy Park, and let's go downstairs to Kevin Donovan. Mistakes and lots of opportunities on both teams, and I think our defense has, has done a great job of, yeah, making plays when we need to. And some big plays at the towards the end of that first half as well. Yeah, I think it's huge not to give up any points. It's kind of a momentum thing. I think uh, you know that interception right at the start of the game, and then again, uh, we've had you know we've had lots of mistakes, lots of time inside of their 30. We're coming away with only three points, so uh, I think there's positives to look at. But we have to uh, clean up our penalties and, and our execution. New starting quarterback. You got to be happy with Colton Hippie so far. Pretty poised back there. Yeah, I mean, something bad happened in terms of the fumble uh, inside the red zone there, but he, but he bounced back through some nice balls. And again, it's just all those things that uh, until you're a starting quarterback, like time clock and, and all that stuff, that you have to do it before you can get it. And he's done a good job of managing that. And just before the game, you talked about confidence. What are you telling the guys now? Only down by six against one of the best teams in the Prairie Football Conference. What are you telling your guys? Yeah, well, I mean, for, again, a lot of, lot of these guys, this is their first PFC. You can simulate it in practice or practice and you can uh, uh, do it in do it in an exhibition game but when you when it's live it's way faster so we're happy with the way the young guys are responding sounds great and good luck the rest of the way coach and now as part of tonight's IC video ICU video procast let's send it upstairs for a special tribute to a special volunteer and an unforgettable member of the Edmonton football community Dave 
Unforgettable is probably the ideal word. The Edmonton Chargers for years have been one of the best run organizations uh, in this city. And uh, one of the reasons uh, was the lady by the name of Susan Morgan, who was just a tremendous person. Everybody has uh, great respect for her. And uh, ICU Video has put together this, uh, this memorial to a, a great lady and a great football person. She was pretty much a parent uh, in 1989, uh, but you could see that uh, her interest levels were, were starting to peak uh, while the season went, you know, progressed. Uh, certainly for myself, uh, I sort of was trying to leave the, the team as a coach, and uh, she wouldn't let me. So she got involved in uh, keeping me uh, on board as a, as a coach in a, at least a part-time capacity. If everybody that knows Susan, she's a very uh, determined individual. And uh, I think with her accounting background, being a CMA, uh, she had some good training. And I don't think uh, her being female had anything to do with what is deemed to be a, a male dominant uh, sport. Last January, I had the opportunity to go down with uh, the U16 Team Alberta, and it was Susan was the general manager. So, I mean, I've been around long enough to know that uh, hats are off and, and shirts are tucked in. And, and it was, uh, you know, still as a 43 year old man, if, if I made the mistake of not taking my hat off when I walked in, uh, she was sure to let you know right away. But it was really interesting to see the kids from Southern Alberta who maybe weren't used to having, uh, you know, the rules as strict and enforced and, and how they reacted. And, and it really only took uh, maybe a day before everyone was following Susan's rules. Football-wise, I mean, there's just watching her, how she handles children. Uh, being a mother herself was uh, somewhat of a, a unique experience, I guess, for me. Uh, I've never had children, so... Um, she uses the, the motherly instinct, but as well, uh, not only just being a parent, but uh, she can be pretty tough. Grandmothers kind of sometimes will let you get away with stuff. Susan was, uh, you know, on top of everything. There wasn't very much that, that slipped past her. Uh, you know, and she knew when to uh, scold you in front of the group and when maybe to pull you aside and, and, and straighten you out. And that was one of, the, one of the great characteristics of her. And I think uh, certainly for, from a player's perspective, uh, and even from a coach's perspective, uh, it was nice to have that, I guess, mother, uh, uh, motherly type person around the clubhouse. I used to get phone calls uh, a couple, three during the year where she would uh, be suggesting that there was things that happened that she wasn't appreciative of and she thought I could do something about them, at least get the message to these people. I think that she found, she found her niche. She found her niche in football and uh, the love of her life was uh, also involved in football, so what else could she ask for? I mean, I've heard on, on the field where, uh, you know, opposing players both maybe were teammates with the Chargers at one point and now are playing against each other in, in junior football, and uh, someone would do something, and, and uh, the first thing that would come out was, what would Susan say if she knew? <laughs> you know, it was, it was just a reference back to, hey, that's not the way we, we play things, so. I was in a CFL game in Regina, and I came down the tunnel, and, um, I heard this voice yell out my name. I turned around, and there was Susan yelling at me, saying, saying, have a good game, Brian. And um, it turned out that the rest of the section uh, knew every move I made for the rest of that game. So we had a giggle about that later. You could say she was passionate about Charger football, but she really was passionate about uh, Edmonton football in general at all levels. Uh, there wasn't an event that went on where, where she didn't have some part to play and, and usually the things that she did were the things that usually went the best. Um, so yeah, she was really passionate about the game and I think that's transferred into any players who had the opportunity to be around her. She was very loyal to those around her and those who put, put effort into the, to the football club, to the game. And, uh, and if she saw that in you, she was very loyal to you as a, as a person. She never accepted no as an answer. There was always a way to, to do something and find a way to do it. So she was always resilient in, in trying to find uh, solutions to, uh, to making things better, making things work. Her mainstay was, uh, was for the children. And she always felt it was important to uh, be able to have every child that had given every child an opportunity to play the game of football, uh, regardless of whether they could afford to or not. 
I know personally from time to time, even though Susan would never speak about it, she personally uh, paid for football fees for kids and I know that she uh, paid for fees for for players uh, to travel uh, to uh, outside of Chargers football to attend uh, camps and, and, and things of, of that nature and in particular uh, uh, I know she funded some kids, uh, at least one player, to go down to, uh, to Dallas for U16. I don't think there's ever going to be anyone who's going to quite match uh, what she did in terms of hours put in. I don't think anyone can. She was just a, a, a really special lady uh, who cared a, a great deal and, and wanted, wanted to, to be the person uh, doing those things. What she built and, and the way she did things was unique to Susan. And I think that, uh, you know, that that's something that, again, those of us who are fortunate enough to be around uh, will never be able to emulate. But I think, uh, you know, people will come in and they'll take bits and pieces of what she did and then she'll make it, they'll, they'll make it their own. I don't see uh, somebody being able to uh, or wants to. Uh, do all the things that Susan did. There's uh, only so much time in a day, but I, I really don't think there's going to be somebody who can replace her. I mean, she's she's uh, she is a legacy, really, in uh, in amateur football and in, uh, in Edmonton and all the work she put in. Well, I can honestly say uh, what I've experienced over the past couple of months. Uh, I certainly don't think it's possible to replace Susan with uh, one person, um, but I don't think she is replaceable itself. Um, She's a very unique individual that uh, took on uh, probably more than she should have. And uh, for whatever reason, she uh, never asked for a lot of help. I believe her legacy will be uh, what she did for children in general. Because she was a firm believer that all children should have the opportunity to play football. And she felt it was the greatest team sport around. And regardless of uh, financial ability, she wanted every child to experience the game of football. And that's what she worked hard for. She said she was going to do this till she was 100. So and I said, well, I, I told her I, I can't guarantee I would be there with her, but I was certainly, uh, I certainly have her back in, regardless. So, but uh, she certainly uh, left her mark here and it'll be, uh, I would say, virtually impossible to replace her. opening game between the Colts and Wildcats. I'm with head coach Matthew Blocker. Uh, coach Blocker, um, overall you've got to be happy with, with your defense keeping the Wildcats offense at bay, but your own offense has struggled to get the scoring going. Yeah, I'm not really happy with any side, all three phases right now, but you know, we, we were happy to get through here with the lead and that was our preseason right there. So uh, uh, our discipline right now is horrible and um, we're missing tackles and we're not throwing the ball when we should. And, and uh, we're running with some effort right now. So uh, hopefully we can keep running the ball and uh, we can get a little bit better and we'll get back to game speed and um, have a second half. What did you tell your guys at the half? We're not disciplined and uh, we're killing the 17 points on the board we gave away. And we're not good enough as a football team to give away any points, let alone 17. So. Um, we just got to worry about those small things and, uh, you know, and, and get ready to play a great third quarter. And what are you going to do to get the momentum back? Well, we got to stay disciplined. That's what's killing us. Uh, you know, we're getting some drives and then they're going backwards and, and uh, we're just killing ourselves that way. So we got to be a better football team. We got to coach better. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. That was head coach Matthew Blocker of the Calgary Colts. And we've got a fantastic second half coming up and we'll send it back up to the media center to Dave Rozak and Rob Harrod. Gentlemen, we're in for, an, for a great second half. I think we are, Kevin Donnan. Thank you very much for that, and thank you for Coach uh, uh, Matt Blocker as well. Uh, Matt Blocker, he's, he's a hard man to make happy anyway, but uh, he's not happy with the scoreboard. But if you take a look at the statistics, the Calgary Colts are way ahead. Uh, yards rushing 142 to 43. Uh, total net yards 229 to 97, more than twice as much uh, as, the, as the Wildcats. So offensively, uh, they've been able to, to move the ball. They just haven't been able to score. Yeah, they have been moving the ball, and that last drive was was a great drive. They put it put a lot of yards up, and then unfortunately, uh, like the Wildcats earlier in the half, they came in with no points, which is really a killer. And as a coach, you go into a half with that, you're you're not going to be happy with your team, and you're going to want your team to play better in, in all phases of the game. 
I, I have to admit, I'm a little bit surprised at the number of running plays both teams ran in that uh, in that first half. 11 for the Wildcats and uh, 14 for the uh, for the Colts. Yeah, I think both coaches are trying to keep their quarterbacks uh, at ease in the backfield, letting the run game help them out. Um, I think earlier it was a little bit harder for the Cats, but they got it going, and it's definitely helped their offense. You know, I think the quarterbacks are, are starting to settle in a little bit more as the half kind of ended. That last drive was great to see, and um, we'll see what the offenses can do because it really hasn't been uh, been a ton of scoring going on other than some special teams play and the defensive plays. so we'll see if the offense can uh, get going on both sides of the ball and put some points up. Uh, despite the best work of uh, Alex uh, Vlander, the uh, total return yards uh, it basically really in favor of the uh, the Calgary Colts, 141 to something like 80 or 57. Yeah, well, special teams is a big part of it, right? And we saw that earlier in the game. It made a difference. Really, that's been the difference in the game is that special teams touchdown. Um, and again, mistakes have really slowed things down on both sides of the ball. We had a touchdown called back from a, from a penalty. We've had yard, I mean, 30 yards on one play in penalties. And so both of those things are playing into, you know, the inability for the offense to get the ball in the end zone. Uh, time of possession is always such a big, uh, a big deal in, in, in the game of football. But in this case, uh, it really hasn't made that much difference, has it? You know, it really hasn't. Both teams have had opportunities to score and they haven't. And then both teams have had some series where it's two and out. And, uh, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to that Wildcat defense. I've been pretty impressed considering how young they are, how young their secondary is. Um, they're flying around making plays, really keeping that team in the game. Talk about uh, both quarterbacks now because uh, both of them starting their first games in the PFC this, uh, this evening. Uh, Colton Hippie had some early adversity and uh, came back from it. So that's got to show a lot of maturity. You know, I'm, I'm impressed with him for his first game. You know what, he's doing a great job throwing the ball into tight windows, you know, running the offense. Yeah, there's been some time count violations and you know, that's usually on the quarterback, not making, just being aware of that. But I think uh, he's doing a good job of making sure that this offense is running. You know, when they get in a rhythm, it seems like they have that success. They've had some drives, a little bit of hurry up offense. You know, the Calgary defense got a little bit tired. Um, and we saw that, unfortunately, it didn't turn into a lot of points. And on the other side, you know, Calgary, it just started gashing with the run game, and that was really, really good in the second half. And that, that uh, or probably the first half in the second quarter, that drive really was a lot of, was a lot of running. Okay, let's get down to field level, and we are just about ready to get this second half underway. Looking forward to it. And you were right, guys. It is a tale of two coaches, Darcy Park looking. Uh, pleased with with the discipline and, and as he as he mentioned before we went to air uh, he wanted to make sure that that his team remained disciplined and he was uh, you know needless to say gentlemen very disappointed all right the Edmonton Wildcats would like to take this opportunity to thank their corporate sponsors and as we mentioned earlier without these guys uh, this team just doesn't do the things that they are able to do year in and year out uh, dental choice uh, flam and fitness uh, the folks at On the Rocks, uh, McElhenney, Consul uh, McElhenney Consulting Services, uh, JC Boiler Service, Rough Rider International, and of course the good folks at WestJet. And having said that, we are just about ready to get this second half underway. Offensively, do we see more of the same or do we see a little bit more passing perhaps? You know, I think we're going to see more of the same. I think Darcy's probably going to try to keep his offense balanced, a little bit of running. You know, that's when they've had the success where they had a little bit of run, a little bit of play action, and the drop back pass has been successful when they've held on to the ball a few times it's been dropped. Um, so I think we're going to see more of the same. I don't think you want to put too much on these quarterbacks early. I'd like to see a little bit more from the Colts offense. I think they've been conservative, but again, you can be conservative when you're running the ball the way they are. So again, trying to get that quarterback in a comfort zone that he can he can execute and really run the full gamut on their offense. I think that'll help the Colts offense. Yeah, what's the point of changing something if it's working for you? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Here's the kickoff taken down at about the 10 yard line by uh, number 13, Alex Vlander. who else? And Vlander will carry it all the way up to about the 23, 24 yard line. So a run back of close to uh, 20 yards on the play and that's where the Wildcats will start the second half. A great job on the Calgary Colts cover team. They, filled, they stayed in their lanes. They did not let the return man uh, get space because he is dangerous when he has the space. So good job on Calgary's part there. All right, they marked the ball at the 23 yard line. Let's see if the Cats can capitalize on some of that momentum the defense gave them in the uh, first half. All right. 
out of the shotgun. Back in the pocket now, looking downfield. There's a pass across the middle taken by Schulten Comper, and Schulten Comper is run out of bounds, just shy of the uh, first down marker, about a yard or so, so shy, about a nine yard gain. A good little under route there by the receiver. He got the, his hands on the ball, and he did a great job of getting the yards he needed to get. And again, offense, you get the ball into the hands of your athletes in a little bit of space. All right. So it'll be second and one for the Wildcats. Looking to get something going here in this second half. There's the handoff up the middle. Kind of a hesitant handoff. It really didn't develop as quickly as it, as it uh, should. And that's happened a number of times. The uh, handoff taken by Jordan Samuel, who's uh, seeing his first action after missing most of last year, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is going to be, uh, they're going to need a measurement on this one. I think they're going to be short. Not by much, but I think they're going to be short. Based on the mark, we'll see where that uh, chain comes out. I'm saying by the nose of the football. <laughs> I think it'll be by the nose of the football on third down. <laughs> All righty. They'll stretch the chains and... I don't know okay. what's the nose. It may be the end of the nose, if anything. Third oh, down. Third down. <laughs> well, if nothing else, a moral victory for uh, for the Calgary Colts. Yeah, force them on uh, third down to go. This is, uh, I mean, you got to make this decision. You got to believe in your old line that you can get a yard. They were in this position earlier in the first half and just barely made it across and again hesitant uh, really not uh, not plowing forward uh, yeah you the, know what I'm, I'm not sure that he even got the ball to his hands that ball was on the turf in a hurry mm -hmm. flags on the play it'll be well that ends motion. the drive for the cats yeah and a turnover on downs on the, on the Wildcats. And that's got to be a, a tough break to start the second half with. No, I think the penalty, I think the penalty is actually procedure. So they are going to have oh. a chance to punt it away here. Oh, they, I think okay. it was procedure, which again, right. actually favors the Wildcats this time because I think that ball came loose and they definitely would not have gotten the first down. All right, they get to punt this one away. Zeroni gets a good kick down to about the 45 yard line taken there by uh, Jesse Kuntz. He sweeps to the outside trying to close him down at about the 50 yard line and finally run out of bounds by number 30 for the uh, for the Wildcats uh, Cameron Mashmeyer. I did a great job holding the edge. He uh, got a decent return got to the edge. Tony pushed him wide and then uh, Mashmeyer did a great job of finishing him off on the sideline. So gain of close to about, uh, I said 12 yards on the play. Not a bad, bad run back. No, they're in good field position here at the 54. 13.08 left in third quarter. 9-3 in favor of the Colts over the Wildcats. Let's see if the defense can uh, do their job again here. Double setback formation. Second man through, handoff to Mitch Minchel, and Minchel is stopped after a gain of about five yards or so. Well, they, they're the Colts goal right back to the run game that was so successful on that last drive. We'll see if uh, we'll see if they keep that going now. They got second down and about four yards. Good crowd on hand for tonight's game. Uh, most of this uh, west side of the stands. It looks like they're still without Taylor Visser at Mac linebacker, so I'm not sure what the injury is or if we can get the word from the sideline there, but it seems like he is still out of the defense. So. We'll see how much uh, that impacts their run defense here in the second half. All right, we'll get Kevin to check on that. All down at the 49 yard line. Second and about four. Handoff, no, they play action. Now it, the option to the outside, it is taken there by the quarterback, number four, Bailey Wasdell. And I think he's gonna be stopped short by a couple of yards. Yeah, I think he's short. He's going to force him to punt. That's a good job on the defense. You know, I think the Colts. Uh, I think the Colts need to keep handing off the ball to the running backs. Yeah. Let the running backs do the running. 
<laughs> bit of an a bit of an update, guys, on on Taylor Visser. Just talked to the training staff, and they mentioned that they are just waiting to test the elbow. It's not a shoulder; it, it's a little bit of an elbow issue. But uh, I, I think it's going to be he'll be back in this football game eventually. Yeah, I hope so. He's a competitor, and I know he'll want to get back out there as soon as he can. So hopefully, we'll see him soon. All right, third and about uh, three and a half to go for the first down. Here's the uh, punt. It's a good one this time. High spiraling punt down to about the five yard line. Up to the 10 along the sidelines and run out of bounds is uh, number 22 for the, uh, for the Wildcats, Isaiah Brown. And it's getting to be that time of the evening when it's tough to see the numbers on the other side. <laughs> Yeah. Those lights are going to need to help us out here a little bit. <laughs> I may have to buy a pair of zoomies. I keep saying that every year, but I never do. Well, it's going to be a long field for them. I think they're starting on the 11-yard line, so we'll see if this offense can uh, can get some momentum going. Great job by the defense of getting the ball back in the hands of their offense here in the third quarter. They had some success in the in the second half uh, with those uh, short 20-yard pass into the middle uh, on that zone defense. and, and yeah, the receivers are finding the spots in the zone. Quarterback's getting the ball there. They hand it off. They, they play action. The pass, it is complete on the far side. The play action to Jay Br uh, Bray Josu and complete on the far side to Tristan Schultenkamper for a gain of about 15 and first down. Yeah, another, again, they're doing a really good job of giving them different looks in the backfield. Play action, drop back, and a little bit of slide. And the receivers are doing a good job running their routes. I like the way Hippie runs that uh, that play action. Off the handoff, face off uh, the face off the handoff to uh, Bray Josu and Josu uh, picks up close to nine yards on the play. He'll be about a yard and a half uh, short. That time, uh, Josu was able to uh, find some room on the outside. Yeah, he did. It looks like the hole kind of collapsed on him, but he's got the foot speed and the quickness to get to the edge and make. Make a great play there. Here they are second and one and they're out of the kind of pistol shotgun formation. Back in the pocket. Pass, it is complete at the 40 yard line. Taken there by number 80, Brandon Rednord, or make that, I'm sorry, 81, uh, Luther Akinovanu. A nice little slant pattern coming from the sideline. Easy completion for a quarterback. Had lots of time, obviously they wanted to protect against a short run, uh, and they came in behind the linebacker and made a nice catch. Again out of the shotgun, quads to the right. Hand off to Bray Josu, and Josu is taken down in their little extracurricular activity. That was no competition there against from uh, number 94, Chris Schwartz. And he was up against uh, one of the smaller uh, offensive linemen for the Wildcats and just took him down hard. I don't yeah, know we, have a, we have a penalty in the backfield. I'm not sure which way it's gonna be going, but uh, they definitely, uh, definitely got entangled there and uh, fought it out to the very end. <laughs> Surprise the flag didn't come out after that. Let's get the call here. Holding against the Wildcats. Decline. I think the holding may have happened between those two players that continued after the play. <laughs> right down to the suplex. That's right. Which seems to be the the operative word these days after that uh, game the Eskimos played the other night. Yes. Lacey with that suplex, which wasn't. All right, back in the pocket, looking downfield. He has a man open over the head of the intended receiver, Brandon Quash. He couldn't get to it, and again, another flag, and it looks like it's going to be another holding call against the Wildcats. I think it came out right on the snap, so I don't know if there was some movement ahead of time. I was looking at the bunch on the top side of the field, and the, the top receiver who was on the line of scrimmage did move a little bit, so I don't think he crossed the line, so I don't know if it was on him. We'll see what the uh, refs have to say about it. Looks like they're talking to Calgary, so I have a feeling it's going to be against the Cats. Matt Blocker giving them some instructions on what to do at the procedure call. 
So here we go, third down, they're gonna be punting the ball away again. You know, they did a good job of getting out of the shadows of their end zone. I know it's not a lot, but again, when you're back in your end zone as an offense, you want to at least get a couple first downs, gain a little bit of field position here, and hopefully get a nice punt, limit the return, and uh, get their defense back out on the field to, to play as they have been. All right, here's the punt. It's a low driving kick down to the 35-yard line and goes out of bounds at that point. And that is from where the Calgary Colts will start off. Well, the best way to limit a return is bounce it out of bounds. And he did a great job of angling that to the sideline, one hopping it out. So there's uh, no return on that kick. 35-yard punt by Matt Zeroni. And it'll be first down for the Colts. Ball on their own 35-yard line. Everybody heading downfield. There's the pass. It is into the middle and complete to Dylan Niedermeyer. Nice little downfield pass for a first down. Did a good job of standing in there. Had the protection. Uh, found his receiver open. Gain of close to 12 yards on the play. I think with a young quarterback, that's the kind of route you need to do. Something timing that it's one, two, three, and get the ball out. Because he's uh, taken a few shots tonight um, that can always rattle you as a quarterback. So that's a great play. They had eight or nine players up on the line of scrimmage for that, uh, for that pass, protecting their quarterback. There's the pass. It is complete on the far side. Taken there by number 12, Richard Sindani. And Sindani is stopped after a short game. That was a good job by, I think it was Isaiah Brown, Knifed in there, got around his block, and had an opportunity to tackle him before he made any moves to get downfield. Well, it looks like those showers are going to stay away, folks, and it's going to be a, it has been and will be a perfect night for football here at uh, Clark Stadium. Maybe, maybe we'll get to the driving range after the game tonight, or it'll <laughs> still be light out. <laughs> you never know. In Edmonton, you never know. Back in the pocket now. Here's the outlet pass, this side, swing pass to, I, to Ramsey, and Xavier Ramsey is taken down after a gain of uh, close to 10 yards. He makes it across the 50, and that is enough for the first down. They've used that swing pass successfully a couple of times now. They have, and they've done a good job of sealing the edge, getting the ball, and it's an easy throw for your quarterback. Nice timing, not a lot of pressure. You get the hoggies out in front, and really, like, you get those running backs in space, they are very difficult to bring down. Three receivers to the right, two to the left, back in the pocket, and another time count violation, this time against the, Col uh, the uh, Colts. I think a big key for the Colts is really staying out of the second and long. I don't think the quarterback's very comfortable in second and long, I mean, as any quarterback would be, but if they can, uh, like I said, like the coach said at halftime, if they can be disciplined and not put themselves into uh, first or second and long, they'll, uh, their offense is gonna have a lot more success. So we'll see what they have here. Um, I think it's first and 15, right? They have put the ball in the air a number of times in these last couple of series. Yep, there he's getting comfortable. Back in the pocket once again. And uh, Ramsey almost interfered with his own quarterback, and the quarterback takes off and is stopped just shy of the 50-yard line. He'll be just shy of the... Uh, line you know, of scrimmage you know he did a great job of reading that you could clearly see that they were after the running back which you know what is really the safe bet for uh for the defense you know what that running back is, is hurting them and tony did a good job of cutting off the edge making the tackle and, uh, and limiting the game so they are again second and 11 so here uh good position for the defense to be in see if the offense has an answer sab chuck in on the tackle back in the pocket now the rush is on there's the pass, it is complete at the 35 yard line, taken there by number 88, Cole Bazinet. There is also a flag on the play and it may have been uh, a face mask, but we'll wait and see what the, uh, what the call is from the official that came after the tackle or just during the tackle. Yeah, you know what, I think it may have been Tony coming up from free safety. I think he may have led with his head on the tackle. Receiver did a great job of going down and picking it up. Yeah, I think it was. I think uh, first contact from his helmet was on the receiver's helmet. That's going to add another 15 to that. That's going to put the, the offense in the red zone. 
helmet to helmet con uh, contact. Yeah, they're really doing a good job in all levels of football, really trying to protect all the players and eliminating uh, plays like that. I know uh, the Cats do a good job of teaching it. There's the handoff to Minchel. Minchel has a hole up the middle, crashes through to about the five-yard line. There is uh, a flag in the backfield, and in fact, in both backfields, offensive and defensive. I think both flags are going to be holding on the offense. Same guy, two refs seeing the same thing. All right, there's the holding by number 52 to the top of your screen. Again, Calgary coach is not going to be happy. Their offense is moving the ball, and they have had to work with that long distances here, so he's not going to be happily on the discipline. All right, that moves the ball all the way back to the 30-yard line with 5.38 to go. Just a quick note from the sideline, guys. Taylor Visser is back in the football game. Well, it's good to see him back and uh, ready to help out on his defense. Twin setback, second man through once again, and this time it's Ramsey, and Ramsey will carry it up to close to the 20-yard line for a gain of close to 10 yards, almost to the original line of scrimmage, about a yard or so shy. Nice tackle by Jane Dalkey to limit the gain. You could see on that play, as soon as Visser got back in, he was moving guys around. He was communicating to his team to make sure everybody's in the right position. So that's the kind of leadership you lose when you lose a guy like Taylor Visser. All right, we've got three flankers to this side, two to the other. Back in the pocket. There's the swing pass again to Ramsey. Ramsey looking to get around the corner and is taken down. They're going to call that a horse collar, but I, it started out, but I, th I think he got his hands down around uh, his shoulders. It seemed like he got one on the front, but it may have come just a little bit too late if the first one lands on the back of the jersey. We'll see here on the replay. But uh, again, I don't think he's picking up that flag, so this is going to really help out the Colts. Guys, the tackle on the near sideline here was about five yards in front of me. The official made a very good call. It was, it was certainly a horse collar. Uh, tackle with inside the pad right right underneath the helmet so the official made a uh, was right on top of it made a great call and Savchuk knew it by his <laughs> by his reaction <laughs> on that replay yeah that's tough that's tough on a defense they uh, really played that play well limited the gain unfortunately the penalty gives them uh, first down inside oh right down to the I think it's one yard line here so first down and goal on the one this is uh this is going to be a tough offensive line to uh, slow down. They are big boys and they are strong boys. I would be shocked if they did anything else but come right up the middle. Wazdo remains in at quarterback. He'll take it himself. A little hesitant uh, and steps into the hole and easy touchdown. Yeah, we do have a flag on the top side of the field. Not sure which way this is going to go, but what play would be a play in this game without a flag? <laughs> All right, they're bringing it back. It's against the, the it's against the Wildcats. So that's the first major of the game by an offense here uh, late in the third quarter. So uh, Calgary finally broke through and, and got in again. Penalty aided the play. I mean, it would have been third down uh, without that penalty. And here's that formation we talked about. And this is exactly why they line up in that type of formation. Let's see where they mark it out. It'll be at about the one yard line. So I don't think it's going to be good. One of the Calgary players is signaling it's good. Well, the ref's on the one, and he doesn't seem like he's going to be convinced otherwise. I think he got to the cone, but he may have stepped out before he hit the cone. You know, we talk about that formation. It, w it forces your defense to play it honestly, and you can see what they ran out of it. They ran that little option play. So now, you know, every team in the league is going to have to prepare for, you know, a possible two-point attempt on that, uh, on that convert after the touchdown. And I'm sure as a, uh, as a special teams coordinator, you're going to have a couple plays out of that formation. Well, it goes for not anyway. It's an offside on the part of the Colts. And so with 4.41 to go here in the uh, third quarter, the Calgary Colts have opened up a 15-3 lead 
over the Edmonton Wildcats. Well, the offense is going to have to get going here for the Wildcats, and uh, hopefully they can get a little a great return by the special teams unit, which has uh, been close. They've been having some good returns. Uh, see if they can break one here and then uh, get their offense either on the field in uh, some good field position. You know, Calgary did a good job with their offense. They're really staying, uh, staying, uh, I guess, pursuing that first down. It was a really long drive. They had a few penalties that put them in second in, or first and 20, second and 15. And you know what? They never gave up, and they just continued. And then with a little bit of help from a penalty, they were able to punch say, it in. Yeah, I was just going to say, a couple of pen penalties, and that'll do it to you every time. But the difference is the Colts have been able to uh, take advantage of that, and, and the Wildcats haven't. Yeah, the Cats are going to have to... Gonna have to get moving here. 15 to three, 441 to go. Here is the kickoff. Short. short one down to about the 20 yard line. It bounces there and is picked up by Vlander and Vlander will carry it forward about five yards or so. Calgary player almost in on top of it. Yeah, it was close. That was uh that was a pitching wedge into the green. He checked it up right by the flag. It didn't bounce anywhere, and I think the returners had a tough time getting up to it. It was a short kick. I think it bounced somewhere around the 20 or 21. I guess there also was a five-yard penalty that uh, was applied to that as well. So we'll see if the offense can get things going here. Ball on the 27-yard line. Colton Hippie in at quarterback. Quads on the right, looking downfield. Hippie. Gets away from one tackler and is finally taken down for a loss. And in there to make that tackle was number 92, Justin Keyes. Yeah, interesting again, another flag. It's going to go against the Cats here. I think they were trying to run either an under route or a slant route. And he got the receiver got hit coming across. I was not sure if there should have been a flag, but it was definitely a potential. And that's why he had to pull that ball down and uh, ended up... Uh, Lyman end up closing in on him. All right, into the game for the Wildcats now is Brandon Quash. Coming out is Jordan Samuel. So they move the ball back 10 yards, or make that 15 yards. It'll be second down and 25. They'll mark the ball just over the 10 yard line at about the 12. Tough down and distance to work with as an offense. <laughs> back in the pocket now, there's the screen pass to Josu, Bray, Bray Josu rather. And Josu is able to carry it forward for a gain of about uh, close to 10 yards on the play. So it's still going to be third and long, third and about 15 or so. Calgary's defense did a really good job of turning around, tracking that down. I think it may have been middle linebacker, number 44. He, uh, he was up in the box. The screen came in behind him, and he tracked him down from behind. If he wasn't there, I think Josie would have been still running because he had a couple blockers out in front with not a lot of defenders. But credit goes to... Uh, Number 44 making a great play. That's Cameron Mons. All right, here's the punt. Good driving Another kick. good punt. Down to the 20-yard line. Over the center field stripe. A gain of about seven yards on the play. The ball taken by number 12, Richard Sindani. Great punt, great cover on that, uh, on that punt. Reduced or limited the gain to four or five yards. Zeroni has really come into his own in this game. Uh, he's been doing some great work punting uh, against uh, Stephen Fabian, who comes into this game as, as a, with the reputation of being one of the best punters in the CIS last year with the Golden Bears. Yeah, I would say Zeroni's done a great job tonight. There's the pitch out this side. Ramsey cuts to the outside. A little juking and jiving, and uh, is finally knocked out of bounds just over the 50-yard line. At about the 46 or so. Good job of James, and James Ends keeping the edge and understanding the speed of this running back because you do not want to give him space. So he played it pretty well, limited his uh, gain to five. Second and five. 
Ball on the 48 yard line. Colts on the march once again, leading by a score of 15 to three. Back in the pocket, there is the kind of draw, I guess you could call it, to uh, Ramsey. And he forges ahead for a gain of about seven yards and enough for the first down. It's just sort of like a delay type draw. Yeah, it's interesting. It looks like the Cats have gone to three down linemen. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's just not uh, giving a di little bit of a different look, but they don't seem to be getting the pressure. So maybe it just brings in a couple uh, athletes into their secondary, whether it's a DB or a linebacker. Just give them, let them use their team speed a little bit more. They've now gone to a three down lineman set here. And off fumble the in the, the backfield and recovered by Ramsey. It's still loose. And the Wildcats say they've got it. Depends on uh, when the whistle was blown because it, it, it orig originally came out. Well, it seemed like he fell on it. And Ramsey it's fell on it, yeah. Yeah. But maybe when he landed on the ball, it squirted out. I don't know if we can get a replay of that and find out when that ball was finally covered up and by who. And another meeting of the minds. I hear Darcy, uh, I hear Darcy up here from the box. He's uh, voicing his opinion on the play. <laughs> if he went over a couple you of You could hear Darcy in Florida right about now. <laughs> Cat bench erupted on that play, of course. So you know, they obviously believe it went out before the whistle, before that first whistle, uh, when, when it squirted out. So we'll see what happens. But will the uh, the Wildcat bench will let us know for sure. All right, the officials still meeting, and uh, one of the Calgary Colts players is Nicole Bazinet. Looks like it's going to go against the Wildcats. And the Wildcats bench did not erupt, so we can assume that the Calgary Colts will maintain possession first down and 10 on the 41 yard line. I'm still not sure what the call was on that play because if it was fumbled in the backfield, and it's first and 10, which I have no idea how that happened, so we're gonna find out. Darcy's getting his explanation. <laughs> Been a number of confusing points made in this football game, and I guess, uh, I guess Darcy Park is walking off, content with what he has heard. That doesn't look happy, but I guess he's got to accept it because it made sense. Should have had Kevin in there with his mic getting that explanation. <laughs> this is a family show. All right, back in the pocket once again, and being hurried is Wazdal, and Wazdal breaks the pocket and heads to the sidelines and is taken down at the 25-yard line, an alert piece of running Bailey Wazdal. Yeah, you know what? He did a good job of uh, getting out of the pocket, seeing the blitz coming. The last couple times he's been hit, he hasn't seen that coming, but he saw it this time. It's unfortunate. Number four was there, ready to make a play. James had had a chance, just came a little bit too aggressively and uh, missed the tackle, and now we got first down Calgary. On the 25-yard with a minute five to go in the third quarter. Colts lead by a score of 53. They've led from the get-go. And if not for the defensive work of this Edmonton Wildcats team, they'd probably be a lot higher, a lot uh, bigger difference than that. A handoff to Ramsey, and he has stopped uh, at about the line of scrimmage, or maybe just a little shy, a loss of about three yards on the play. Now that was Taylor Visser getting in the backfield, making a great play containing that very dangerous running back. Second and 13 into the final 30 seconds of this third quarter. Colts flank three to the right, two to this side. This, the play action and the pass wide open at about the 20 yard line and uh, easily taken by Dylan Schrott. He will forge ahead for a gain of close to 10 yards. It'll depend on where they mark it down. 
they had to get to the 15. I think he's short down. by about half a yard or less. Picked up about 12 and a half on the play. And here's the handoff or the snap and the quarterback sneak. In for a gain of about three yards and there's a little extra curricular activity going on there. We just saw a flag. Yeah, I think frustration is going to be setting in on behalf of the, some of the defensive players for the Wildcats. They've played a decent game. They're just not, uh, their offense just hasn't been able to move the ball this half. And uh, that can get frustrating as, as well as getting tired. They've been on the field a long time. All right, the officials talking it over again. One of the Cats players is pointing that it's against the Colts. So we'll see. Uh, That's Jaden Dalkey. And there is head coach Darcy Park. All right, let's get the word from the official. And that will be the end of the third quarter. It's going to go against, I believe, the Colts, did he not say? Yeah, I think it's against the Colts. I think it's going to march them back, and that's going to drive the coach absolutely nuts they just keep stopping themselves and uh, and uh, their offense is just making it more difficult each time they take a penalty like that but again the motions are are rising <laughs> coming uh, down to the last quarter in the season opener for both these teams they both want to get a win and you can see there's some frustration on both sides of the ball prairie football conference action continuing Virtually every weekend here at uh, Clark Park, of course, the Edmonton Huskies will be in action next week, and we'll have that game for you as well. That's a great time of year when football uh, is getting played again all over the, really over the continent. We get uh, more games now, and it's uh, fabulous to see. So we're first and 10, it looks like. First and 10, the ball on the 25-yard line. The Colts in possession. Looking downfield, here's the swing pass out on this side this time to number seven, Dylan Schrott. And Schrott is ridden out of bounds at uh, just shy of the 20, about the 22 yard line. Good job of uh, tackling in there by number 13 again, Alex Vlander. Looks like what the defense is doing, they're going three down linemen, they're bringing in an extra DB to play in space. I think Vlander is the extra DB out there. Yeah, he could be. It looks like that's what they've done is tried to get their best athletes on the field to cover as much space as they can. All right, we have a lone flanker to this side, number 12, Richardson Danny. Back in the uh, pocket now, looking downfield into the end zone. Decides to go short instead over the outstretched arms of Minchel. And it will go incomplete. And once again, the Wildcats defense bends, but does not break. Yeah, quarterback had a lot of time to get the ball, but again, with the extra DB, there's more bodies in the secondary. And when uh, there's a lot of bodies with a young quarterback, he's going to be hesitant throwing it into a crowd, and that just went over his receiver's hands. Well, here's the uh, bizarre formation here now as a field goal unit. All right, they'll decide to go the conventional route. And from the 30-yard line, Field goal attempt. Okay. And there is a timeout on the field, I would assume. Coach Darcy Park having a discussion with his uh, with his special teams. Uh, he may be expecting something. Yeah, I'm not sure. It seemed like the defense adjusted both, you know, out to the to the group formation on the side, and then and then adjusted back in. But there's obviously something he didn't feel comfortable with. No, maybe it was too many men. Not sure, but he definitely definitely felt the need to talk to those guys and make sure they're ready. <laughs> Twelve point lead for the Colts, and they are looking to increase that by three, at least. Ball remains down on the 23-yard 23, 23 line. 15 to three in favor of the Colts. I 
That was a good hold by the defense, as you just mentioned. You know what, giving up seven points here on this drive would have made it a pretty uh, big hill to climb for the offense to get points on the board. But now, uh, if they can hold them to a field goal or less, then uh, that's, that's going to be a win at this point in time for the defense. Vlander awaiting this one in case it is wide, which it is. And it goes over the touchline. It'll be in for a single point and a 16 to three football game with 13 33 to go well good job by the defense again they've uh, they've given up some yards but they've done a good job not letting them in the end zone too many times only that one touchdown here we had in the in the third quarter so good job giving up just a single point now the offense really needs to get things going here i think they need to find some rhythm uh, not sure if they're ready to go back to the no huddle offense but it seemed like they had a, they were able to gain some momentum and and uh and move the ball but again this Colts defense has been rested and take a look it looks like the Colts defense has also gone to a three-man front now putting more guys in the secondary knowing they're gonna get some passes all right there's the handoff to Bray Josu he has stopped at the line of scrimmage now finds some room to the outside and is taken out of bounds at about the uh, 45 yard line which is where he needed to be to get the first down yeah, great job of really making quite a bit out of nothing. There wasn't much in the backfield, but again, everything gets congested. He did a great job of getting outside and not giving up, never giving up, running hard. Receivers, both receivers did a great job of trying to just get a block, give him space. One of those linebackers tried to take him down from behind, but he was able to shake that off to this side of the field. Back in the pocket now, looking downfield. The alley-oop pass, it is intercepted at about the 25 yard line and in the, out of the arms of the receiver and into the arms of the defender number nine Jordy Kimbamba yeah another tough play there you know what they had a great call threw it up to a big athlete out there and it came right in his hand and he just handed it to the DB unfortunately you know it always makes you second guess do you take the the quarterback sneak for the first down or do you take a shot and again Darcy made the decision to take the shot. I would have made the same decision as a coach. Take the shot, and then if you don't get it on third down, it turned out about as worst as it can. A very dejected Luther Hukunavanu-Vanu had that one in his arms, and it just kind of slid out and right into the arms of the, uh, the defender. And it's first down for the Colts, and it's a handoff to Ramsey, and Ramsey has stopped after a gain of about a yard or so. A good job by the defense, getting some penetration in the D-line and getting a hand on him. He is not an easy person to get a hand on. Looks like the penalty is going against them, but they're going to be uh, second and long as it is. Wow. You look at the uh, body language of some of these defenders, and I was, I was watching uh, Tony Sadchuk particularly, and that's a tired bunch of uh, defenders out there. Yeah, they've been working hard, and, you know, you I mean you look at the scoreboard. I mean, seven of those points came off of uh, the special teams two others came off of a safety so you know they're not giving up a lot of points unfortunately they've been on the field a long time 12 18 to go in this fourth quarter the Colts leading by a score of 16 to 3 the ball is on their own 25 yard line everybody up on the line of scrimmage now two flankers to this side looking to the other side it is caught just shy of the 40 yard line and carrying it over the 40 yard line and finally taken down at about the 43. The uh, receiver was number 82, Thomas Bennett. Yeah, another tight window, he got that ball and they have the extra defender, uh, two guys over top and then everybody else manned up across the board. Boy. Did a good job of delivering it on time, just enough for the first down. And he made another five or six yards out of it himself, carrying a couple of players with him. So they mark it at the 43 first down, or 42 rather, first down for the uh, Colts. Quads on this side of the field, and now the swing pass again to Ramsey. Ramsey gets by the original tackler and is finally taken out of bounds after a gain of maybe four yards or so. But uh, the, the Wildcats seem to be reading that play okay. They just can't get to, uh, to Ramsey. He's just too fast for them. Yeah, he's quick, and I think, uh, worst of all, we have another penalty. I think it was on Edmonton, so it's going to... I think the guy on this edge down on our side jumped, was uh, at least in the neutral zone, if not. Uh, oh no, I'm wrong, sorry. Looks like the Calgary Colts, both penalties are going against the Colts, so that's gonna, oh no, the ref's not trying to sort it out still. <laughs> 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 we 
We got one on each team. I think I was right on the offside, I, and then I, there was another penalty on the Colts. I thought he was doing the hand jive out there, to be honest with you. Well. <laughs> You'd be too young for that. I am, yeah. No, it was the electric <laughs> slot I thought he was going to start to do, but. Uh. <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> Well, those two penalties should play in favor of uh, the Cats, and it seems like it does. They've marched it back. Mark it down at the 36-yard line. First and 15. 11-16 to go. I'm beginning to think that the, the Wildcats are just, they're, they're very tired, and that's probably what's causing a bunch of these penalties as well. Yeah, I think so. You I mean they're working hard, obviously. Yeah. Darcy's done a good job coaching him up, and he's, uh, I mean, they've been flying around all night. This is not a defense that stands around. They've been around the ball trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's tiring when you're on the field for as much as they have. You can do all the off field or off season conditioning you want. When it gets down to this time of the year and in this heat and in this kind of football game, again, this is the handoff to Ramsey. Again, he breaks the original tackle in the backfield. And again, he'll plow ahead for a gain of about seven yards on the play. And it'll be second and close to eight. His run game, they just about had him in the backfield again, but because he is so quick, didn't just, couldn't get enough on him. Did a great job making it a manageable down and distance for the quarterback to convert here on second and five. All right, they call it second and five, so it'll be on the 46 yard line. There's the delay on that uh, handoff once again, and again, it works perfectly. Yeah, creating space for your uh, stud running back is uh, seems to be the formula that Calgary is following to allow their young quarterback to get uh, used to playing in the league. He gets into the backfield on the tackle made by uh, uh, number 48, Michael Davids. You know, the other piece, they're just chewing away the clock here on this drive with so many plays. That's going to catch up to the Cats if they can't get the ball back soon. There's the snap, the handoff, right side to Minchel. Minchel across the 40 to the 42. He's stopped there by number 17, Matt Zeroni. When you have two running backs that can play as effectively as these two have been tonight, uh, that makes it a whole lot easier on quarterback and uh, offensive coordinator column plays. Two different styles of, of running back too. You've got uh, Minshew who had uh, really quick to the hole kind of guy and, and uh, of course the shiftiness of Leo Ramsey. Yeah, that's definitely going to tire out the defense. And the snap and being rushed, almost intercepted and Jaden Dalkey had the ball in his hands and couldn't hold on. Seems like the start of that play was a little bit odd. I don't know, the ball came late and everybody was moving. I'm not sure uh, what happened. There's no flag, so I guess it was all legal, but. Uh. Second and 10. Ball still on the 39 yard line. Let's see if this defense can hold them again. Give their offense a chance. That's the story of this game so far, for the most part. There's that quick outlet pass. It is incomplete. And not sure who it was intended for. There were two receivers out there uh, for, the, uh, for the Calgary Colts. Um, Thomas Bennett and Cole Bazinet. I think Bennett went after it, and uh, Bazinet kind of lifted his arms up in the air. Like, one, what happened? Yeah, I think it was another little screen pass with two blockers. Unfortunately, the ball kind of went into the pile of them, which made it difficult to catch. And obviously, uh, they couldn't execute on that play. So we're back to... Uh, the exciting field goal formation, I like it. I like what they're doing with it. Making you guess, making you be ready. All right, they'll move into the conventional formation. And actually the Wildcats uh, stack things to the left side. Here's the attempt. It's going it's to be, be short wide, and wide and short. Taken there by Vlander. Vlander has some room up the middle. He gets around one tackler. He's got some room on this side to the 40. One man to beat and is taken down at the 50 yard line. Alex Vlander gets up and yells at his bench and says, okay, I've done my part. You go and do yours. Yeah, you know what? Great job on the return. 
you know, blocker set up the holes really well and he exposed it. You knew it was going to happen eventually. Good job of everybody trying to get their blocks. And uh, you know what? He did a great job of putting the offense in really is the best position as you could ask. Great blocking by that uh, by that uh, special team. That he gave him a, a, a hole you could drive a truck through. Yeah, you know what? It's a tough thing on uh, field goal. You, you know, that what that's what makes coaches question, you know, do you want to kick the long field goal or not? Because a miss can can uh, be very, very dangerous. All right, again, there is a, a meeting of the minds down at the, on field level. It looks like the initial call is actually going as a, as a legal block against Calgary, so they may add some yards to this. They will be. They'll put it down at the 51-yard line. So the penalty is declined, and they will take the ball over on their own 51-yard line. The Wildcats with 8-11 to go. They trail 16-3. to Two-possession ball game here for the Wildcats. Back in the pocket. There is that screen pass again to Bray Josu. And Josu is stopped after a gain of uh, about uh, a yard or two. You know, Dylan Niedermeyer did a great job reading that knife and, and, and limiting the gain to just a couple because uh, that could have gone a long ways. But Niedermeyer did a good job of sniffing it out and uh, getting around some big blocks out in front. Four receivers to the far side of the field. And once again, Colton Hippie is being hurried. He gets out of the pocket. He can run and picks up close to 16 yards on the play. Yeah, he asked earlier in the, in the broadcast if he was going to take off and run, and there you go. You saw him didn't even hesitate, knew he could get first down markers, and away he went with all the space out in front. And he's got some speed, too. He does, big body, but once he gets going, that's good. So, again, if he can find space, uh, He's got a chance, and you're going to have to pay. Ball on the 42-yard line in territory. There's the snap. The handoff to Bray Josu, and Josu plows ahead for a gain of close to three, perhaps four yards on the play. Now, I don't know if it's, if it's me or, or, or what, but some of, these, uh, some of these handoffs just seem to be slow in developing. Yeah, you know what? Their mesh point may be off just a little bit. And again, that's, you know, first game of the season, you know, new quarterback. You know, some of them are just uh, taking a little bit longer and uh, O-line is not holding up or the timing's not right where the hole, when the hole's open, the running back's not ready to go through. There's the snap. Hippie with the pass, it is complete. And I'll tell you what, Colton Hippie threaded the needle on that one. That, hey, that receiver was, was surrounded. You know what? He did a great job of holding on to that ball. I think he's the one who dropped the ball earlier downfield or, or popped it into the hands of the DB. Luther you know, hacking it up. Yeah, three guys in there ready to make the hit. Did a good job using his hands, pulling the ball into his body once uh, he had caught it so it didn't come out. First and 10. Wildcats offense on the move here in the fourth quarter. There's the pass. It is incomplete. That's drive killers right there. There's been a few drops that have really cost them, and that's another one that would have put them in, you know, second and two, and now they're dealing with the second and ten. And, you know, at this point in time in the game, you're really playing three down football, so they need to they need to execute a little bit better, make that catch, and uh, and keep this drive going. Isaac Fainan, the intended receiver, couldn't hold on to that one. Four receivers to this side of the field. Hippie is rolling that way. He's got the pass complete. And another job, of, great job of holding on to that one, as, as, as you said earlier. And this time it's Brandon Olson, the uh, the veteran, pulling that one off. Looks like at third and two, Darcy's to have to make a decision. It looks like he's keeping his offense out there. Uh, did a great job holding on to that ball. Took a vicious shot. And, and no huts at the same time. And well, it's not time count. It was uh, a timeout. Time out. There we go. Calgary calling a timeout. Interesting formation that the uh, Cats came out and they're still in that kind of pistol one back look. 
uh, even at you know third and two, they obviously uh, seems like they don't feel real comfortable going under center, running just kind of downhill against these guys. So they're going to mix it up, and and they really need to convert this. It, it was a look they obviously haven't given the uh, the Colts too much of. The, the Colts are obviously concerned about that. The coaching staff calling that timeout from the sideline. So yeah, maybe they were thinking they were going to kick the field goal here. <laughs> Just down here on the Wildcats bench, guys, I'll tell you, the, the bench down here is electric. You can't convince anyone that they're out of this football game. They have brought the defense together a couple of different times, and defensive coaches are telling these guys, it's your game. We, we can come back. We can, you know, we can certainly make this happen, but it's, it's up to the defense now after this drive. Yeah, there's no question that defense has been playing really, really well tonight. And they, uh, you know, they need to make a couple more plays here in the rest of this game to give themselves a chance. Let's see if these Cats offense can get into the end zone. All right. Out of that shotgun formation, go movement goes to the right. There's the pass. It is into the end zone. It is incomplete. They say he was out of bounds. I think he caught it, but he was out of bounds when he... Now we're going to see this hopefully up on the replay. You know what? Third down and two, and they go for it all. They had a chance. They had the receiver there. No receiver just, I don't think he got his feet down. I think both feet came off the ground. He ended up landing right on the stripe on the outside. Big catch, valiant effort, unfortunately. Just couldn't keep his feet down. That's where, uh, you know, the toe drag is... Uh, it it's something been, he's got to he's got to master. I would have liked to have seen that in slow motion because it looked like the Calgary defender landed on his uh, on uh, the receiver's foot as it was inbound. But at any well, rate, we could go to video replay. See if they'll listen to us. Turnover on downs, and uh, we have a mix-up in the backfield. And I mean, you can expect ahead is Ramsey anyway. You can expect Calgary to do nothing else but run the clock out, use some clock, try to get a couple first downs, and yep. put this one away. That was Jordan Gabriel Cannon, actually, out of the backfield. A gain of about uh, seven on the play. It'll be third and three, or second and three, rather. Well, you got a three-man front. That's something that's going to tell an offense to run against you. There it is. And he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Mitchell once again. He needed to get over the 20, but uh, we'll see where they mark it down. It looks like he's going to get the uh, first down. Yeah, that's the 30 they just crossed, and he's, uh, I mean, that's the recipe, right? If you can run in the fourth quarter and put a game away, you know, Calgary's going to have some positive things to take out of this if they can uh, run the clock out and finish one. And this defense has got to be tired. They have been on the field a lot tonight. Darcy Park moving D lineman in and out of this game. There's the handoff up the middle, going nowhere with 3.25 to go. Well, that's a good stop for uh, the defense, still playing hard, still trying to get that ball back for their offense. You know, going back to that uh, almost touchdown by the Cats offense, and notice the receiver opted to dive and bring the ball or catch the ball with his body as opposed to getting the hands out there. I know. Uh, in film review, the coach is probably going to tell him, you get the hands on the ball, it gives you a better chance to keep your feet down. So, Let's see if the defense can do it here on second down. Over center, a handoff to Minchel. Minchel tries the outside and is stopped. Piled up at the line of scrimmage on a nice stop by Alexander Wielander. Did a good job of closing down the edge, not letting him get to the edge and stopping him just short. We'll see if, uh, looks like Calgary's uh, keeping their offense out on the field. Well, Vlander playing for a little extra this year. This will be his probably his final year, I believe, in uh, in PFC. I think he's aging out after this year. But uh, boy, I'll tell you what, he's had a great game not only on defense, where he's been slotted in, but uh, oh, in the special teams on punt returns and kick returns. Yeah, let's see if he can uh, he can be there. He's a lone back, so who knows if the catch is going to be bringing. But we know the ball's going to end up in his hands likely, and uh, it's going to give him the opportunity to make a play. So the Colts are forced to kick this one away. Waiting for it will be Vlander on his own 25-yard line. Oh, and there's oh. the booming kick we saw in the first quarter. Down to the 20, up to the 25, cutting to the middle. Vlander is still going. 
and is finally tackled just shy of the 30 yard line. I think he might be kicking himself for that one because he had some room to the outside to the far side of the field and couldn't quite get there. Just just tackled from behind at the last minute. Yeah, sometimes that's just a result of trying too hard, thinking if I can just get to the edge and use my speed, he uh, seems like he got up limping a little bit too. Hopefully he's all right. Well, now the offense is definitely under the gun here with just uh, over two minutes left. They're definitely going to be airing it out. And you can see Calgary's gone with a 30 front with the extra DB. Probably expect to see a lot of two zone and two man. As they pass, it is incomplete into the arms of the defender. That's number 23, Jordan Ray. And uh, in and out of the arms of, of Schulten Camper, right into Ray's arms, and he runs it back for about another, another 10 yards or so. Let's take another look at this one. This is just how close the Wildcats have been coming all night. There you go. You know, that's going to be frustrating for your quarterback. He's been putting the ball on the hands of the receivers, and we've seen, you know, just a few too many drops, and then two of them actually not out of the hands of the receivers have resulted in interceptions, and neither of them being the quarterback's fault. And a couple of drops earlier in the game as well. One of them may have, could have gone for a touchdown, but back in the pocket again. It's Wazdo, Wazdo, pass complete at the five yard line and stretching out for it. Uh, looks like number three, Colt, no, number seven, uh, Dylan Schrott. What yeah. a great catch. You can see the uh, screen passes that they've run all game paid off downfield. They ran a little fake screen. The guy who usually goes to block the corner through the block and took off downfield had a step and he put it right on him. Got in behind Isaiah Brown. And they'll mark the ball down at about the five yard line or so. What a nice little catch he made. He had a layout, bring it in. That's never easy because usually you're landing on the ball tucked under you. He did a good job of holding on and uh, making a great play. Put him in a real good scoring position really to put this game away. But now, of course, this new turf here at Clark Stadium is nice and soft. So. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I've, uh, I've coached my team on here, you know, one or two times at least every year. Um, absolutely fabulous turf to play on here. All right, we have uh, another timeout, I believe. Now we're ready to get underway. So it's first and goal. They got a stacked backfield here with three running backs, only one receiver. It looks like they may have brought in an extra old lineman to play tight end here. They got the elephants out there. There's the handoff, and right up the middle, once again, it is number 21, Minchel, and Minchel has uh, really really put on a show for this Calgary offense tonight, him and, and Xavier Ramsey. You know, I have to think both of those guys must be over 100 yards. Oh, yeah. Well over 100 yards. They've been, uh, they've really controlled the game. I think once they established that, they haven't, uh, they haven't really looked back. That run game is doing really well for them. All right. Will they go for one or will they go for two? Looks like they're going to go for one. I think they're feeling a little bit lonely out there, so they all came in and... Uh, <laughs> oh, they had a meeting over on the, on the sidelines there. There it is, up and down and out and good. And so with a minute 46 to go in this, uh, well, there's a replay and, and there's Minchel again, but he, he had lots of room to. to uh, you know, those old linemen are really, you know, they're getting a push on a very, very tired defense. Right now that defense has played, you know, they've played fairly well all when you leave them out there that long. Um, you know, you can only expect so much over the course of a game, especially down here in the fourth quarter with a team that their running game has just gotten better and better. Nice shot from our end cut camera down there. The ICU video, video crew doing an outstanding job for us here tonight. Great job, guys. 146 to go, 23-3. And you'd like to see the, 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 the Wildcats uh, put something on the board offensively here before time runs out. Goes to the far side, taken by Isaiah Brown. Brown cuts to the middle and is taken down at about the 25-yard line. This time the uh, 
Calgary kicker was not taking any chances. He knew to take it, uh, keep it away from Vlander. Yeah, I don't think Vlander was out there, so I wonder well, if coming up, injured. coming up limping last time, they uh, kept him off of there. So that's uh, something. Hopefully, he'll be uh, healthy, ready to go. Niedermeyer makes the tackle, and it's going to be first down from the 24-yard line. Well, let's see if the offense can do something here to build on for next week. Wildcats are on the road next week. The Huskies are at home here at Clark Park. There's the pass. It is incomplete. What a hit. I put on the receiver, and I think he's feeling it. The, uh, the hit was made by Jordan Kabamba on uh, Brandon Olson, and boy, you could hear that one up here. Yeah, he did a great job of reading that play, seeing the quarterback eyes inside. He just came down on him. Ooh. It was tough, that high ball really, uh, it's good. he's gonna have some sore ribs tomorrow after going up to try to catch that one. And a good clean shoulder hit too. Yeah, his head, which is exactly what they're trying to teach him in football. Colton Hippie at quarterback for the Wildcat. Looks downfield, fakes once, and is taken down from behind for the quarterback sack. Yeah, he double clutched that one. He had the time slid up in the pocket, but they just ended up coming down from behind him and took him down. Look, it like, looks like it was uh, number 96, uh, Jamin Paley, or Pelly rather. So it'll be a, a two and out. Third down and 11 with a minute 24 to go. Clock continues to run. Zeroni getting ready to kick this one away. I think Calgary's only got 10 or 11 guys on the field. <laughs> Good kick down to the 45 yard line in Calgary territory and run out of bounds at about the 50. Maybe a legal substitution may, uh, may give him a chance to carry this, continue this drive. Here we go. Richard. Either Richard Sindani taking that punch, uh, that, that punt rather. And so the Wildcats offense looks like it'll go back out on the field. Well, we'll get another chance here in the last minute to see if they can uh, move the ball. I still think they're gonna be faced with a third and one because I believe it's a, oh, it's a 10 yard penalty but maybe automatic first down, so we'll see. And again, Darcy Park on the field, trying to uh, get some kind of clarification on what is going on. Well, one official is bringing the ball. Oh, here we go. 10 yard penalty. So it is gonna be third down, it's gonna be third and half a yard. We'll see if they can convert and keep this drive going. This will be the third attempt at uh, third and short. And that one moved off the line a lot quicker. The uh, offensive linemen were able to get down quickly and uh, Colton Hippie was able to follow through on them. Yeah, well with that 30 front, I think they were still in the 30 front. They didn't want to change personnel. So a little bit less weight up front gives the O-line a chance. So they did a good job though. Maybe the fourth guy just didn't want to come out on the field. Yeah, <laughs> O-line did a good job staying low, getting a surge keeping their pad level down so they can give the quarterback some space to go. So here we go. I think they're gonna have to go into their hurry up now with just under a minute left to see if they can gain some momentum to build on for next week. Less than a minute to go. There's the handoff and the fumble in the backfield. It is uh, picked up and covered up by Isaac Fainan. He has not had a good night. Uh, Isaac's had a, a couple of balls go through his hands and uh, that one on I the sweep. We've seen the fake sweep before, and we uh, that's the first time we've seen it actually tried to be attempted in the mesh point. Where again, mesh point is critical on any of those handoffs. Timing is critical, and that just uh, it just wasn't there. Didn't get it down. That's why I say don't hand the ball to a receiver. Throw it to him downfield. And the bottom line is, it's just it's just a matter of time. It, uh, that 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 kind of thing takes time. There's the pass. It is going to be knocked down, I believe. Uh, it was uh, right into in intended for number 10, Justin Swedish, uh, or make that uh, Brandon Quash. And went right in, in, our, in out of the arms of the defender, Colton Burr. Yeah. He was right there, low ball, couldn't quite pull it in. But So third and 10 from the 36, and uh, the Wildcats will just kick this one away. 
Yeah, you know what, for the Wildcats and Darcy with those guys this week, you know, they have some positive to build on. They, you've seen some good things tonight from a number of players and from different units. You know, they need to uh, definitely, you know, clean up a few things and, and work on some of the timing stuff on their offense. But uh, there's definitely some positives they can take away from this game. You know, they're going to be critical. They're going to look at the film. Um, you know, and, and you take the young guys and you teach them from their mistakes. Jesse Koontz taking that short end over end kick down to the 50 yard line. And the Colts will take over from there with 15.1 seconds to go. There's some confusion, I think, on the Colts bench. We're going to, oh, there's going to another referee's call. Well, it looks like the offense has to go back on for 15 <laughs> more seconds. Another too many men penalty. That's the second time that they've had an issue with their special teams. I think they were short a man the last punt. What were, were they not? Yeah, that, there was something wrong with their substitution. With all that confusion, you think they'd be from Saskatchewan. <laughs> you know, they, they know uh, they know what too many men can cost them. So, <laughs> all right, three flankers to the right side. Hippie is looking left. Downfield has him. a man open. It is complete at the 20 yard line. Oh. And note, they're going to call it incomplete. You know, Dylan Niedermeyer did a great job defending that, even though it may have been right in the hands of the receiver. He didn't give up and was able to rip it out as they came down together. Unfortunately, that's two shots downfield. That really, that receiver, I think he could have caught, could have completed. How can Ivano again, uh, unfortunately, was unable to hold on to the football? One of the issues that I think that Luther may have in this game is that the ball has been behind him on almost every throw. Yeah, he's, two ha he's had to stop and look back for it. Yeah, he was definitely two or three yards past his DB, and uh, yeah. unfortunately, it came up short. All right, Hippie with the pass. Uh, it is complete to Hakanuvanu at good. the midfield stripe, and with .2 seconds to go. Well, they got one more play. One more play to get off. He was uncovered. I think he wanted the ball a little bit earlier from the quarterback to give him a chance to, uh, to make some plays in space. But again, the secondary is playing pretty deep. Going to rally for the tackle. And, uh, you know, Calgary's going to take the bus home with a win. And that's, you know, what that came to do. There, there's a lot to learn, I think, for the players on both sides of the ball. The upcoming week's going to be busy in the film room. Back in the pocket again, Hippie. Looking downfield, big bomb, man open. It is incomplete at the 15-yard line. I believe it was intended there for number eight, Brandon Olson, but he was surrounded by two or three Calgary Colts players, just couldn't hold on to it. Well, the clock has expired, Not but there is a penalty, so we may see one more. We'll see what Darcy decides to do. All right, here we go from the re referee. I think, I'd, I think I'd like to see a little screen pass. You figure? Let's give it one more dose of Josie for the, uh, to finish this game off. With a, with a loose secondary, there's gonna be a lot of space out there. That's a 25 yard penalty. And that'll bring the ball down to the Calgary 30-yard line. Well, it's within striking distance of, the, of his arm, so we'll see uh, what they decide to do here. Well, it looks like someone's getting walked to the dressing room. Right here in front of us. Number 96 getting escorted across the field, so uh, that's what uh, caused the 25-yard penalty. Again, the coach is going to be frustrated. You know, those... I mean, those are the things that in the end are going are gonna to cost a team. You know, if Calgary wants to make a push at the championship again this year and compete against the Hilltops, they're going to have to eliminate a lot of those penalties and, and just the discipline, right? That's pure discipline. And I know the Calgary coaches are continually trying to preach that culture, and that culture, I, I guarantee you, does not involve those type of penalties. So he's going to – he'll continue to preach culture, really establish what he's, he's – or continue to establish what he's already done in Calgary. And uh, – you know, make sure those guys are making smart decisions with their head, whether it's the last play of the game and the game is, you know, essentially done, or uh, whether it's in the first quarter where it uh, can stall drives or, or, or give momentum to another offense. All right, so they'll put four flankers out to uh, this side of the field. 
And everybody heads downfield. Colton Hippie runs out of the pocket, fires complete at the 15 yard line. And that will be the football game. And nice that they would get it to number 85 on the last play of the game. Uh, Isaac Fainan had just a, a terrible night, uh, an unlucky night, if you prefer. And yeah, he, he pulls that one down and completes it. So that's, that's got to help a little bit. You know, that's going to give him some confidence. The other thing, just, you know, even that last play emphasizes the ability of the quarterback, uh, Colton, to get out of the pocket. You know what? He's really done a good job. We talked about it earlier, how they're going to use that. And, you know, right there, he put the ball on the money, on the run, both directions. He's gone to the right. He's gone to the left. And he's been able to deliver the football really accurately. I think, you know, most of the interceptions tonight have all been off the hands of receivers. And so he's... He's played you know, quite well for a young quarterback. Uh, and on the other end of the field, uh, Brandon uh, ba Bailey Wasdell uh, for his first game in the, uh, in the PFC as a starter. Uh, a good, smart game, mind you, most of it called by the, uh, by the, by the coaching staff, but still uh, a well-played game for him. You know, he did. He did what he was doing, you know, aided by a great run game that you know, starts at the O-line. The running backs did a really good job. Two very athletic, two very good running backs Calgary has and that's you know if you can surround a young quarterback with talent around him like that you know they did a really really good job it took him a little bit I think to get going get comfortable but I think in the second half he was taking shots downfield a little bit more uh, you know that first pick I think set him back a few steps but he's recovered from that and uh, he's going to develop into a great quarterback I think over the course of the season especially with you know the running game that they have you know you can rely on that a little bit more early for the young quarter to come along and develop uh, develop in the system that he's playing in it's something that uh, the fans can can watch i think as, as this season progresses is the uh, the dual ability of these two uh, quarterbacks to develop and, and see who maybe comes along the uh, the fastest or the best uh, by the end of the season i, I think it'd be something uh, interesting to watch yeah for two young quarterbacks they didn't really make a lot of mistakes you no. know you can expect that sometimes in their first start they didn't make a lot of mistakes i mean it wasn't perfect but they did uh they did do a good job of managing the game, running the system that was called by the coaches and really uh, just working together as a team. I think on both sides of the ball, I know the Colts uh, managed to get a few more points, and uh, but I think the Wildcats definitely have stuff to build on. They've got talent, you know, b on both sides of the ball. I think they need to, you know, those receivers need to get on the jugs machine. They need to catch a lot of balls this week and really focus on, uh, on securing the ball. That really cost them and killed a number of drives. At the same time, uh the coaching staff really didn't ask um, much of the offense uh, on both sides to to do tonight. They 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 kept it clean. They kept it easy, and uh, 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 fortunately for the Calgary Colts, uh, they just came out on top uh, score wise. Yeah, you know the Cats are going to have to find a way to uh, you know finish drives on their offense because they have had a couple drives. If they would have finished one of those all night again, they're within one score. You mean you know six inches, eight inches out of bounds on a touchdown throw would have bring them within a score. So. You know, although it was a, a little bit of a gap in the end, um, you know, the, the, the uh, Cats were close. And I think they're going to be happy, and they're going to definitely have something to, to work from here. Well, that's exactly, I think, what, uh, what Co Coach Darcy Park will tell his team after this game. They came uh, exceptionally close uh, on a number of occasions where the ball, uh, the receivers uh, just could not hold on. A couple of uh, interceptions in and out of the arms of the receiver. Uh, otherwise, this could have been a lot closer uh, football game. Yeah, it definitely could have. I mean, it wasn't really out of hand at any point in time until the last few minutes. You know, I mean, the Cats were able to put a drive together. I mean, unfortunately, it didn't end in a touchdown, which, you know, gave them a, a two-score lead, which eventually became a three-score lead after a drive by the Colts. But uh, definitely an exciting game. You know, I mean, the Cats' defense played well. You know, something they can continue wow. to, to draw from and lean on early in the season while the offense develops. And again, so often the defense is ahead early on, you know, whether it's in practice against your own defense. And uh, you mean the Cats offense is going to have a good defense to practice against. And so they're going to have the opportunity to get better for next week. All right, Kevin Donnan is uh, just waiting for Matt uh, Blocker to uh, make his way toward the sidelines. And uh, we'll have a little chat with him. He may not, may be in a, in a somewhat uh, a chippier mood than uh, uh, the... Uh, than he was at the end of the uh, first half. And uh, player of the game, uh, of course, we always have to come up with one of those. And the player of the game, I think, will be number one, Xavier Ramsey. And uh, we'll try and get uh, uh, Kevin Donnan to uh, talk with Xavier 
after the after the football game, uh, after he talks with uh, Coach Matt Blocker. And uh, Kevin just uh, getting ready to set it up with uh, the Calgary coach. And I think we're ready to go downstairs, so let's uh, bring in Kevin Donnan with uh, a somewhat uh, happier Coach Matt Blocker. A little happier than he was at the beginning of the second half. Uh, Coach Blocker, you were able to establish the running game with Marshall or Minchel and Ramsey in the yeah. second half. That had to be a key. Yeah, it was a big key. Like we, we felt the one thing we were doing successful was running the ball and getting on blocks and moving people. So, um, you know, we stayed with it. And then we actually succeeded and made a few things in the past game happen. But, um, you know, that's, that's the bread and butter of our team, and we got to stick with it. And the boys, uh, the boys came through. What are you going to plan for next week as getting in going forward, uh, preparing for Regina next week? Well, we every part of our game has to get better. This is like, like I said, it's like having a preseason game for us. So we have a lot of things on film that we <laughs> get a chance to watch and get better at. And I think for all of us now, like we started to settle down a little bit in the second half. And uh, now it's, you know, the season's on and we got to get better, better next week or, or Regina's going to come in and whoop us. So we got to get better. And a win is a win. Hey, two points is two points. And. You know, we had 17 practices leading up to a game, and our, our goal was to get two points, and we succeeded up here in a tough place to play, and, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy about that. Congratulations. I want to bring in Cameron Munns, number 44 of the Calgary Colts. This was your first game, first first start in the Prairie Football Conference at middle linebacker, and the Colts defense did some great things. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we definitely prepared a lot for this, just for this moment, these uh, 60 minutes of football, a lot of preparation. So. Like we said, a win is a win. We came out, we did what we had to do. Uh, it's definitely different coming out here as a rookie, playing on a defense like this that has high standards from years past. So it was, it was good. And what were the butterflies like, uh, you know, at the start of the game for you? Starting, you know, your first, not only, not just your first game in the Prairie Football Conference, but at middle linebacker. Take us through that a little bit. Uh, so coming in, I was just hoping to make it the travel team. That's what my thoughts were at that coming into main camp, spring camp. I was just thinking I have to make the travel team. So coming into this week when uh, our linebacker coach said, you're going to be stepping up at Mac this week, definitely at that point for the rest of the week, my mind was just thinking about being precise, being there, be knowing what I have to do. So, but yeah, after that first play on the field, the butterflies were gone and we're just, it's, it's just football. And, w and where do the Colts go from here? Uh, we're just going to go into next week, prepare, do what we have to do. Same thing, the last three weeks have been preparing for this game. Uh, so we know Regina's a good opponent. They're going to come come to our hometown. We're just going to have to prepare, uh, make sure we're at practice, we're precise, we know what we have to do. I'll make sure we have a good three days of prep, a couple days of prep. Congratulations and good luck the rest thank of the you. season. Thank you. We want to thank you for joining us this evening for the season opener of the 2016 Prairie Football Conference season. On behalf of the Edmonton Wildcats and ICU Video Productions, including our executive producer, Rob Zitlock, Dave Foley, our technical director, our entire crew, and we want to throw it back upstairs to Dave Rozak and Rob Herod before we say goodnight from Clark Park. Gentlemen. All right, thank you very much, Kevin Donnan, and uh, the the statistics, the, 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 the full-time statistics have kind of bear out the score of this one, and, you know, we talked about the running game, especially uh, Xavier uh, Ramsey with uh, 18 yards, or 81 yards and 11 carries, but I think, you know, as, as fancy as he may be out there uh, and looking as good as he does, uh, uh, Dylan Minchel is that straight ahead kind of guy and he pulls up 133 yards and 15 carries. What a night for him. You know, that's over 200 yards for those two running backs and they really did it by committee. They complement each other and they really challenge the defense to play differently because they both have speed. Uh, they both can uh, really take, you know, take advantage of a defense that just is one getting tired, and they, they showed that definitely in the second half, both of them by committee. And no question, Bray Josu, of course, uh, uh, carrying the workload for the, for the, uh, uh, the Wildcats with uh, 12 carries and only 50 yards. And, and really, that's not much for Bray Josu because he has done much better in the past. And last year, he, he had just a great season. But uh, uh, when, you're tr when you're up against a, a huge defensive line the size of that Calgary Colts uh, D-line it's 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 tough to get, get by them yeah he had a challenge and again as they started to to get down a little bit you know they kind of had to abandon that run game where on the other side of the ball when you have it you go to the run game a little bit more so you mean both all three of those running backs did an outstanding job ran hard every play and, and uh, getting back to the, to the Colts uh, Xavier Ramsey with uh, 60 yards on six receptions most of those of course being uh, most of his his own yardage on those quick swing passes. 
Yeah, he did a really good job. Again, that's that's what you want to do as a coach. You want to put your players in a position where they can succeed based on their skill set. And you know what? Him in space, very, very dangerous. And uh, he did an outstanding job of exposing the defense and, and exposing that space that they were giving him on swing passes. I mean, there was some draws. I mean, they got the ball to him in many different ways tonight. You know, that's the one advantage or the, the one positive, I think, for the Wildcats. When you look at uh, their receivers, uh, Shulton Comper, uh, Josu, uh, Brandon Olson, Hakan Ivanu, Isaac Fainan, uh, all coming up with a number of catches tonight. So they're able to spread the ball out, and that's got to be a good news as far as the offense is concerned. Well, it's going to take this offense playing together. Everyone's going to have to contribute when they're called upon. And, and you know what? They did get the ball around to the different receivers. Unfortunately, we also see a number of different receivers with drops today. Some of those, in, you know, directly turned into a turnover. So that's, that's unfortunate for the offense. That really did have some momentum going at times. They just didn't have a chance to, to, to convert that into touchdowns. And some of that because of some drop balls and, uh, and so on. Well, the final score, the Calgary Colts 23 and the Edmonton Wildcats 3. Let's go back downstairs to Kevin Donnan. And that brings week one, the season opener for the Edmonton Wildcats and the Calgary Colts to a, clo to a close. We want to thank you, of course, for joining us this evening for the season opener on the, of the 2016 season. On behalf of the Edmonton Wildcats and ICU video productions, including our executive producer, Rob Zitlaw, Dave Foley, our technical director, our entire crew, and of course, our broadcast team of Dave Rozak and Rob Herod. ICU Video Productions, we don't webcast, we procast. The final score, the Calgary Colts 23, the Edmonton Wildcats 3. My name is Kevin Donnan. On behalf of ICU Video Productions, good night from Clark Park in Edmonton. <laughs>